test, test, test. All right, all right, let's get this started. Oops, I forgot to open the chat room. All right. Okay, good. All right, so where was I in the game? We just um, saved the Bandu Bandus. Oh, she's awake. April. And this one Bandu who sounds like Bill Mummy, but I don't Good think morning, it's Bill ben Mummy. Bandu. Greetings of the new day to you, April. Did you sleep well in the spirit dig? Did I sleep well? Aside from the voices, the apparitions, the sharp rocks poking me in the back, and the moist moss mattress? No, not really. So you were visited by the spirits? I guess. When you told me last night that I would be, I, I didn't believe you. I thought it was just a manner of speaking, like saying, don't let the bed bugs bite. Our ancestors are close to us at all times. Once in a while, they speak to those who have been chosen to spend a night in the spirit dig. That they spoke to you is a great honor. April, a great honor. Right now, I'd be happy to exchange all the honor in the world for one decent night's sleep. <laughs> oh dear me, you are very funny, April. If all humans are as funny as you, your cities must be filled with laughter. <laughs> the Elder wishes to speak with you again. And I must sing now, down in the tunnels. It was decided this morning that I was finally ready to join the diggers. I'm happy for you, Ben Bondu. Thank you. May the balance provide you on your journey, April. You will be in my heart always. And you will be in mine, Ben Bondu, always. You will come back when your journey is over. I'll try. Bye. I don't remember if Ben Bondu survives this game. Stand farewells. Farewell. So, you are awake? Did you sleep well? As well as can be expected, I guess. Does the word Buckbar mean anything to you? Buckbar? Where did you hear this word? The spirits told me that I'd had a buck bar. So the spirit spoke to you openly? You are lucky, human. Some who enter the spirit dig never come out again. And some spend the night but hear nothing. But to you, the spirits spoke. A buck bar is a vision of yourself that speaks the truth in two ways. One is the dark truth. This is how you see yourself when you are not sure of yourself or angry with yourself. The other truth is the very opposite of the first. This is how you must see yourself to be happy. But the spirits remind us that both are important, that you cannot love yourself without first seeing your flaws. The people I saw, were they really there? The spirits use masks to convey their messages, and they speak in voices from the past or the present that carry great weight with you. Messengers are never the same, nor the message, but you must take care to hear and heed their words. I was told that my name among the Banda would be April Bandu Mbata. She among the little ones who seeks and finds. So, you are the one we sing of. The human who would come to aid us and to save our world, and who will then tear it apart. You bring tidings both happy and sad to the Banda, April Bandu and Bata, both hope and despair. This world will never be the same again once you have passed through it. But we are grateful, and I'm proud to have met you. 
to give you what you came for. It was just luck that brought me here. I didn't come for anything in specific. Yes, you did. This is what you came for. What is it? This is the stone given to us by the fathers to keep safe until this day. It has been with us for so long. Oh, it's a piece of the disc. Then you know it. You came for the stone, even though you didn't know it until now. I guess I did. Thanks. Well, that was easy. Now, you must continue your journey, April Bandu and Pata. Remember that this is your tribe now. And so you are welcome at our fires and in our digs whenever you come this way again. I'm honored. Thank you. May there always be soil between your toes, April Bandu and Pata. And between yours, Elder. Goodbye. The Elder Bandu. Through the swamp. Wake up! I didn't even know this crow was there. Uh -huh. Turn off the big light, mommy. It's called the sun, crow. Welcome to the world of the living. Oh. I was having this weird dream about a big-ass turkey wearing a pair of red shoes. And you were there. And, and he was there. And, and, and maybe it wasn't a dream after all. I think it's safe to say that you need therapy, and we need to leave right now. We do. We do. Let's go get him. Get who? <clears throat> uh, who are we getting again? Roper, so Roper Clax. Out to rule the world with his powerful and destructive magic. Roper Clax. Yes, exactly. Uh, I'll keep an eye out for other potential threats, then, shall I? Like uh, marauding mice. You do that, Crow. Thank you. Thank you. Mosquitoes everywhere. I hope one of those clouds doesn't get a whiff of me in charge. The last thing I need now is malaria. Swamp water, swamp water. There's an ordeal I'd prefer not to go through again. Did I drop something? It feels like I dropped something. Whatever it was, one of those things probably ate it. What did I drop? What did I lose? I don't know what I'm, I lost. I spent half the day crossing that damn swamp, and I have no intention of going back that way until I have to. They feel very soft to the touch and soothing like skin moisturizer. I'll bring a few in case my hands get dry. Never hurts to be prepared for a dry skin emergency. They look like dark purple tulips with a satin texture. Pretty, but a little too gothic for my taste. It's like, where's the funeral? That must be Roper Clax's castle. The whole gravity defying bit kind of gives it away. I wonder if that's like the Arcadian equivalent of an RV. I mean, I wouldn't think relocation is a big problem. I wonder if that's like the Arc...
nice stone look, but not particularly realistic. Strange texture. My fingers feel tingly. Oh my god! What are you? I don't understand what you're saying. Can you try to open your mouth a bit? Robaclax turned him to stone. Impossible? Okay. Okay, there's gotta be some way to help you talk. By the way, can you help me get up there? Into the castle? I don't know any magic, sorry. But I'll try to find a way to soften you up. Good thing I got that softening uh, flower thingy. Let's see if that works. That doesn't work. The stone surface is too coarse and the petals aren't moist enough by themselves. I think I need to mix them with something to make it easier to apply. Organic plastic. Hello again. Yeah. Um, so you right. Those berries look ripe and juicy, but my mom taught me never to judge a book by its cover. They're probably poisonous and almost certainly fattening. Nah, -uh, that marshy ground between me and the berries looks treacherous. I'll probably get stuck and drown. See if Crow has anything to say. Arr, it's chilly out here. You should really be wearing a sweater, doll. You don't want to catch a cold, not with the fate of the known cosmos on your shoulders. I'm fine, thanks, Crow. Keeping my eyes open, you know, floating on the warm winds, doing that whole Hawkeye shtick. I'm getting pretty good at it, too. I spotted you from at least 100 yards away. Impressive. Yep. They don't call me... <laughs> the Lord of the Winds for nothing. Do they really call you that? No, but soon, by the balance, they will. Now, what can I do for you, sweetheart? What can I do you for? Crow, I need you to fly over there and get some of those berries for me. I didn't know Crow? I can use them like this. Yes, ma'am. Don't eat the berries. No, ma'am. Thanks, Crow. You got it. I'm gonna go back up there and work on my eyesight. I ain't stopping until I can spot those cute chicks from miles and miles away. There we go. Moisturizing cream. Unfortunately, I don't think the salve will be effective for very long. I may provide the way. Lorhan, I'm a sailor, and you've got to help me get out of here. I don't think I can stand it much longer. What happened to you? Oh, that blasted, blasted alchemist cast a spell on me, turned me to solid rock. Then he put me here, 
be gatekeeper and anchor for his blasted castle. That was near six full moons past now. You've been here for half a year? Curse the balance. We say it like that. It is an age. My wife is sure to have taken someone else's bed by now. Blasted magic. The vanguard were right. What do you mean the vanguard were right? That we've been at the mercy of the balance for too long. Time to make some changes. Put the control back into the hands of the people. How would that have helped you? Well, for one, there wouldn't be any rogue magicians like this Roper Clax running about causing trouble. Do you not agree? I'm not about to argue politics with you right now, Lorhan. I'm in a hurry. Who's arguing? And blasted be my rocky hide. Get me out of here. How can I help you? It ain't just me, April. There are dozens of men up there. Servants and sailors and merchants and soldiers. All sent here by their masters to deal with Roper Clax. Ha! <laughs> Cursed be the balance. We've all been turned to stone, and our souls trapped in a crystal that the madman keeps in his tower. He draws power from that, power that shouldn't be his by right. But this blasted problem of the balance has upset the natural order of things. If the vanguard were in control, this would never have happened. Things would be like they used to be a long time ago. Everything the vanguard are the reason why the balance is out I'm of sure whack. The problems, but this rift, it ain't natural. Science and magic belong together in the hands of the people. Not to some naked guardian fellow on a tower somewhere far away. Listen, we've got more important things to think about, like how I'm going to get inside the mountain, beat this clack guy, and free your soul. Yeah, 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 you're right. I can feel my muscles turning to stone again. We must hurry. How do I get inside the mountain? I'll pull the stairs down for you. Usually when Clax comes and goes, he softens me up for a bit, just so I can raise and lower the stairs for him. And then he changed me back to solid rock again. Once you're inside, and if you manage to defeat the madman, I don't see how you're going to do that, a young woman like yourself. I'm pretty resourceful, and I'm not your run-of-the-mill teeny bopper either. You're what? Anyways, if you defeat Clax, you must find his study and break the crystal, the soul stone. That should break the spell and give us back our flesh and bone bodies. Sounds like a plan. All right, here goes. Watch your head, April. The labyrinth. Great. I so love these things. Jump! Jump into the abyss! Who is that? Wait, don't tell me. Evil wizard. They all sound like Richard III on crack. Bah! He's got his hand out like he's begging. Well, let's give him some money then. His hands on fire. Can I put the fire out somehow? got his hand out like he's begging. It's a mirror door. 
I look different in that mirror. Darker, scowling, scarred. Must be the light. of a staircase. Not fair. Now I understand how Wily e. Coyote felt. That damn bird. <laughs> Who's knocking? Interesting room. Balance be cast. That's one stony face. That's one stony face. You want some candy? That's one stony face. It's a piece of the stone disc I got from the. It's a calculator. That's one stony face. One stony face. Okay. How the heck did I end up here? I didn't walk. Oh, no. I look like a serving maid. He's got his hand out like he's begging. Hmm. What did I just get? A salt shaker. How did I get to that other side? Can I make the stone face sneeze with the salt and pepper I have now?
Hell's bells. Say whatever you want about Roper Clax. He certainly knows how to keep a big fire. Oh, wait. Are those human bones down there? Evil alchemist or not, at least he's made some effort to make the place look good. Big, that's one big window. Evil alchemist or not, at least he's made some effort to make the place look good. Finally! <laughs> I was beginning to think you would never make it through my labyrinth. Welcome to my humble home. Do you like it? I had it built according to my own specifications by the most skilled architects of Arcadia. They have since become a permanent and quite attractive fixture of their own building, of course. Oh, but I forget my manners. I am, as I am sure you already know, Roper Clax. And you would be? Relinquish your prisoners and free the wind. <laughs> oh, this How does he know what Kodak is? This is a Kodak moment. But why look so shocked? I am uh. quite familiar with your world, you know. Automobiles, rocket ships, telephones. America's funniest home videos. I have great plans for the future, you see. Once the Vanguard succeed in their hilariously destructive little ploy, they do not know what they are getting themselves into. <laughs> As for you, April Ryan, yes, I know who you are. I think I will allow myself a few moments of amusement before I take your soul and trap you in solid stone. Why did you trap the wind? Why does the wolf eat the sheep? Because he Don't can. I don't think you answered my question. Because he's hungry. Because I can, little girl. Because I can. And because of who I am. Because I am hungry, and because the time is right. I think you did it because you're insecure and you have to show off your petty magic to the world. Shut your pretty little mouth. I will devour you. I will... <clears throat> but we must not lose our self-control, must we? No, we must not. Why did you turn those people into stone? Questions, questions, questions! I do not need to explain myself to you, little bastard child! Do you know who your parents are? No, of course not! Too stupid! What? What do you know about my parents? Suffer the little children. Oh, how I love that phrase. It is my life's philosophy. I like suffering, especially the suffering of innocent children. Their screams are so pretty, their tears so salty. You're a real shit, Clax. I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> Prepare to be defeated. Prepare to be defeated. Ha! Clichés! Is that the best you can do? Watch me. Yes. And you plan to do what? Witness the men who came before you with their weapons and their magic. Look what happened to them. Turn to stone. Each and every one of them for all eternity. I even own their souls now. And they will feed me and keep me strong for as long as I need them. How original. Been reading a lot of fairy tales lately, have we? What's up, Doxalagos? Oh, how precious. <laughs> Welcome from Gab. Oh, shit, what's happening? See? 
I could scour your flesh off your bones in a second, little girl. Now, do you think you could defeat the me? audio is doubled? Huh, let's see if I can fix that. Audio is doubled, you say? It shouldn't be. Are you hearing me double or just the game double? The game and my mic. All right, let's let me pull the stream up on uh, on my phone and see if I can hear it. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Yeah, I'm not hearing. Oh, yeah. All right. So test, it. Test. Okay, so it was on your end. All right, good. All right, there we go. Oh, whoops. How about a proper challenge? A proper. <clears throat> what What do you mean by a proper challenge? I can't defeat you with magic. I'm not a wizard. Wizards? Frauds! The lot of them! The only real magic is the magic of alchemy. But of course, you cannot... Alchemy is the weakest of forms of magic. That is why I will win. Anyone can become What's an alchemist. What's so about beating me with magic? That's not a challenge. That's a walkover. If we even alchemy is them, just listening to instructions. And it's science, you essentially. Anyone can You're do alchemy. To trick me. I know it requires that. knowledge, not but talent. You intrigue me, little girl. Go on then. Issue a challenge worthy of my powers. Hmm. A math challenge, maybe? I challenge you to a okay. contest of simple I have a calculator using only this petty little device against your supreme intellectual powers. Give me your best shot, but after this, I will take your soul and trap you in stone for all eternity. Sounds good to me. Okay. Here's one. 49 times 11. 49 times 11 what? Numbers. Okay. Think of apples and oranges. 49 apples times 11 oranges. 49 times 11. Let's see. Carry the one over, divide by three. What to do with that file? <clears throat> no, forget that one. So that leaves us with... Nine! Aha! <laughs> what? Wrong. It's 539. That was an easy one, Clax. Is that the best you can do? Uh, two out of three. I'll give you an even easier one this time. 603 divided by three. Ooh, you underestimate my powers, little girl. 5,867.2.3! Aha! Way off. Wait, 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 wait. It's too hard. If he doesn't know math, he just Sorry, has to take your you word that lose. you're giving the correct answers. Give me that thing. Ooh. 
This is intriguing. This really is. What does this do? Oh, my. Uh, what? What just happened there? Why did he get eaten by the calculator? That's not a magic calculator. I'm confused. What just happened there? And I always thought math was such a waste of that was, time. I don't understand. That was a normal calculator. What with the one line? You didn't do anything. I'm I'm confused. I look like a serving maid. It's a crystal ball with tiny specks of light flitting back and forth inside. This must be where Clax has trapped the souls of all those unfortunate people. I can't reach that high. There's something behind the curtain. Clever fellow, that Roper Clax. Who'd think to look there? I mean, looks like a window. I don't know how high up we are, but there are clouds below us and I can't see the ground. Okay, so I need to find all the vials. I can't reach the red vial up there though. But maybe I can get Crow to grab it for me. And I had to open the window to let him in. Oh, that makes sense. What's I'm solving the puzzles on? by accident. Nice digs you found here, though I'd cut down on the mad alchemist decor just a little. It's just not you. I don't plan on sticking around, Crow. Heck, why not? You'll be mobile. Home security is not an issue, and you can strike fear into the hearts of men. When you put it like that... I mean, it's it's well, a great home. Love hey, to have a floating castle. You. Don't have to so, pay real estate tax. Why'd you call me? Although the U.S. military would probably shoot me out of the sky. What's going on out there? What's going on is that we're currently cruising at an altitude of, uh, oh, very high. And where are we heading? We're very slowly going nowhere except up. There's no wind, remember? It'll start getting chilly and hard to breathe in a few hours, however. That won't be very pleasant. I could use some help. I'll try my best. Just let me know what you want me to do. Think you can get that red flask for me, Crow? Unless you want me to knock it down for you? No way. It's too large and unhandy for my claws. Hmm. used for emptying the contents of the pot into a container. Empty vials. It's a big cast iron pot simmering over a slow fire. Big book. Alright, so what we got? We got 
first spell. It's a spell. Clouds and spiders' webs, plus um, magic finger. If alchemy is anything like chemistry, that last one is probably some kind of catalyst or something. Clouds and spider web plus catalyst makes invisible. rustling of tiny legs. Okay, so that's spider. <laughs> it smells like pearls of morning dew. Or not spider. It has the texture of thin strands of hair. Is that a wind chime? I can hear a distant tingling sound like crystal bells. <laughs> Smells feels cool to the touch. I can hear. Is that wind? It sounds like distant thunder. That was thunder, okay. So this is a thunder cloud. It smells like goza. It feels moist. This is a cloud, and this is white. White is cloud. It sounds like the rapid flapping of fragile wings. <laughs> it smells like fresh flowers. It feels soft like satin and very fragile. can hear the rustling of tiny Okay, so legs. green is spider and white is cloud. Let's combine those. It's a tap used for emptying the contents of the pot into a container. Empty vials. Empty vials. I don't have any vials. The reagent, the gold ring, maybe? No. It's a tap used for empty vial. Empty vial. Empty vial. Empty vial. It's a big cast iron pot simmering over a slow fire. Is there something I have to click? Add fire somehow? I'm in my salt. It's a crystal ball with souls trapped inside it. more pages in this, this book? page has been torn out leaving only part of it readable if you bother to tear it out it must be important only part of this page is readable only part of this page is re only part of this page is readable
Maybe it's on a different floor. It's a mirror door. I look different in that mirror. What am I missing here? It's a big cast iron pot simmering over a slow fire. Whoops, that didn't seem to mix too well. It's a big cast iron pot simmering over a slow fire. It sounds like the rapid flapping of fragile wings. I can hear a distant tingling sound like crystal bells. It smells hard to define. Feels cool to the t It feels soft like satin and very fragile. I don't know, I need some sort of reagent. I don't know what that would be. I'll just pour the finished potion into one of these vials. Like so. Fortunately, they're small enough to carry in my pocket. Alright, so I have an invisibility potion. Now let's take that and go into in front of the mirror door. This way I won't have a reflection. Let's see what happens if I do that. I'm invisible. That's so cool. It's a mirror door. Oh, there's paper there. again good timing I've got to hold on to this stuff if nothing else it's perfect for sneaking into oh I could I could grab that while I was I visible in that mirror. Darker, I didn't try to pick it before scarred. but I assume whatever was in the mirror would have attacked me if I tried to grab it that's probably what would have happened I'm solving these puzzles without even knowing I'm making mistakes <laughs> or I'm not making mistakes for that matter all right, let's combine the parchment with the book. No, let me just read it. It's a page that's been torn out of a book. From the intricate schizophrenic hand. Okay, butterfly wings, cloud, and ice spark. Butterfly wings with clouds makes leaf. With brimstone, makes storm. 
Storm, I could bring the wind back with this potion. Spider's webs and butterfly wings makes... What is that? Butterfly wings and clouds makes light... So blue is the reagent. Okay, so... Butterfly wings is yellow. Clouds is white. And then blue is the reagent. I'll just pour the finished potion into one of these vials. And that potion is the light as leaf potion. Let me use it as on myself. I'll just take a tiny little sip. And grab this explosive potion up here. <laughs> Bitter. I do feel a And Crow's gonna be shocked. Save some of this stuff for the Olympic. No comment, Crow. All right. All right, so now I got clouds and red plus blue is wind. Clouds is yellow. Was it? Plus red. Plus blue. Whoops, that didn't seem to mix too well. Nope, that wasn't right. I fucked that one up. And the spider web was. Well, red plus red plus blue is that one. Let's take care of that one. Just pour the finished potion into one of these vials. Big Bang Potion, okay. Butterfly plus spider plus blue. Sounds like the rapid flapping of fragile wings. Okay, yellow is butterfly. And green is spider? Yes. I can hear the rustling of tiny legs. Yellow plus red. Plus blue. Sorry, yellow plus green plus blue. Whoops, that didn't seem to mix too well. 
Why didn't that work? Spider's web and butterfly wings create a potion for binding magic. Spider's web and butterfly wings create a potion for binding. Spider's web is green. I can hear the rustling of tiny legs. And butterfly wings is yellow. So green, it yellow, like the and then blue. Of fragile wings. Do I have to do them in order? So green first. I did yellow first last time. I guess it has to be in specific order because it worked that time. I'll just pour the finished. Okay, and the last one is number three. Clouds with brimstone makes a stormy wind potion. Something plus a red. Clouds is what color? White? Sounds like distant thunder. Okay, so white plus red plus blue. Now is the last potion. I'll just pour the finished potion into one of these vials. Since I'm all out of vials. It's crow. Okay, can you just use the wind potion? What if out the, the wind window? just blows it back inside? have to find a better way to distribute it. Okay, give it to Crow to distribute. Crow's the best. Hold on to this vial, okay? Oh, sure. Holding on to stuff is a specialty of mine. What for? I'll let you know. I want you to fly out there, Crow, as high as you can and empty the potion into the clouds. Oh, what if there's lightning? I don't like lightning. Lightning has caused better birds than me to crash and burn. All right, all right. Crow is the best. Do it. I'm the ever faithful crow. Uh oh. I guess it's working. That's done with. There's still quite a bit left in the bottle in case you need it later on. I made this essence using brimstone with brimstone, which... Huh, the magical essence in this vial is supposedly used for binding magic. Whatever that means. It's a vial containing an essence that can bring back the wind. It's a vial containing a magical essence that's supposed to take... It's a vial containing a magical essence that, with luck, will make me invisible.
I'll save it for when I really need it. So I guess I'm done in here? Shook shouldn't leave without at least trying to free Clack's prisoners. Oh, okay. So I gotta use the bind on the crystal. Okay. It's a crystal ball with souls trapped inside it. You shouldn't, shouldn't leave without at least trying to free Clack's prisoners. Blow it up, maybe? Well, it's pretty darker. I mean, the prisoners are literally lo bearing the load of this castle. So once they're free, won't the castle start, uh, you know, collapsing while I'm in it? Oh, that poor bastard. He, he tucked and rolled. He tucked and rolled. <laughs> So I can't remember, what was I supposed to do after I did that? I mean, I, I guess the castle fell no, slowly. No, no, I should get going back to Mercuria. Oh uh, yes, I freed the wind, now uh, I just need to find this damn uh, navigator. Captain Nebeve? Huh? Oh, it's just you. Where have you been? Where Freeing the wind. Don't you remember? I went north to find Roper Clax and get him to release the wind. Oh, I. You know, the wind did pick up mysteriously last night, but... Uh... But what? I don't think I you don't had anything trust to do with it. To not die down in a few hours, or at the most a day or two. But I destroyed the alchemist. I even set his prisoners free from the rock they were trapped in, destroyed the soul stone, sailed back here in his floating castle, and and you don't believe a word of it, do you? Not a word. Great. I did defeat Roper Clax. Uh huh. Do you have his severed head somewhere on you? I left the calculator in the, in the castle. I didn't say I killed him. Of course you didn't. Can we set sail for Elias now? Well, Need a navigator. the wind has picked up a bit, but I don't trust the good weather to last. I don't want to be sitting dead in the water come tomorrow afternoon. So I'll wait a few days more. Thanks for nothing. The old, the old man keeps his bird locked in there. Poor guy. Bird, that is. This guy over here, I don't remember him there before. I'm not in the market for an instrument at this particular moment. Still, 
Good to know where to get one in case of a uh, musical emergency. Nobody's home. I still have not found this navigator. There you are. I'm in a mind to fire you. I asked you to make your delivery to Tun Lyak at the journeyman. By the, by the. Maybe Tun Lyak finally made it to the Journeyman's Inn. Assorted bottles and spices, it was very comfy. Excuse me? Yes? Do you know when Tun Lyak is expected back? I could not tell you, child, but from what I know of this... Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. That back rooms are both empty. It's a small wagon pulled by one of those strange beasts. I need to find Tun Lyak. I don't know where the fuck Great view. this person is. This I can't hold my liquor. I'll be spending the rest of the day doubled over, staring in. It's a brown, slightly cloudy liquor. Let's see if I could uh, spike his uh, his liquor with something. I'll save it for when I really need it. Mr. Westhouse? Sir? Are you in there? I guess he's not home. He really should lock up. But then again... Mr. Mr. Westhouse isn't at home. Okay, can't break into his house. Some kind of sandstone, but grittier. The dragon's mouth is pointing straight down at the middle of the floor. Oh! Oh, goodness. Could I see? Oh, certainly. Actually, I don't feel like reading. Very well. Bye now. Hmm? Won't budge. Can I loosen it with an explosive? I don't have explosive anymore. Damn it. is pretty cold. Okay, I'm not quite sure what my mission is right now then. I defeated the alchemist, unleashed the wind.
It's closed. It's closed. The temple is closed. That's the guy in charge of the Cups game. Did you make your delivery to uh, buy them? That's the guy in charge of the Cups game. I mean, Tunlek is supposed to be at the pier looking for a boat. The blue, the blue flames of Markyria. It's a lighthouse. The blue fire is burning bright. A safe. I wouldn't feel too comfortable about sailing anywhere in that. Like a toy boat for children. I can show him Captain that Nebevay? that huh? I control the wind. I got something you want. What? Well, out with a girl. What is it? Oh, nothing. You do remember our deal, don't you? I. Um, uh, remind me what the deal was again. That if I defeated Roper Clax and brought the wind back, you'd give me a lift to the Isle of Elias. <laughs> sure. <laughs> The day I see a girl like you bring down a powerful alchemist like Clax is the day I hire a woman to be my navigator. Well, look at this. That will be today. <sighs> By the balance, girl, that's a strong grog you got there. What is it? Tyrant Did he just drink wine? it? It's the wind. Watch this. Crow's gonna get blown away. Sweet job, that's a strong wind. You got some mighty powerful magic there, girl. And there's more where that came from. Care to share some of it with us? With that magic, we could make good time to Guillen. Pick up a cargo full of apples and be back here before the competition got, uh, wind of what was happening. Sure. If you give me a ride to Elias, as promised... Balance be cursed. Women aboard? When will it ever end? Jowls, bowels. Be here by this afternoon, or we'll sail without you. As if I mean, you still need a navigator. Magic. And you did say something about hiring a female navigator? Damnation! Do you insist on remembering every little thing I say, girl? Don't you know that Jal has forbidden women from riding the waves? Fascism is Sounds not like the same as authoritarianism and totalitarianism. Your choice. I got the wind in my pocket. Now you learn to treat women with a little respect. I've run out of curses, girl. Jal be damned, I am in desperate need of a navigator anyhow. The problem is leftists all who right, use the word fascism right. you use the word to mean authoritarianism because they don't understand what fascism is. They think 
of fascism means authoritarianism, but it does not. He said yes. Captain Nebevet. Huh? No, it's just. Thanks for. All right, so now that he's got a navigator. Or he will be hiring the female navigator. That means the navigator should be back on at the inn. All right. So if we create a scale on on economics, fascism is an economic term, not a political term. So, for instance, if we have capitalism, capitalism is the private control of goods and services. Uh, on an economic term, socialism or communism would be government control of goods and services. Now, they will say, uh, they will say that it's... Um, the people control goods and services, but the people is government. Because an individual versus collective, someone has to manage the collective, and that's the government. Now, what fascism is, fascism is an in-between state where you still have private ownership of goods and services, but you have government mandating regulations and basically uh, managing the... Uh, the mark the broad market and that's what our current society is we actually live in a fascist society today because even though we have private ownership of many goods and services we have the government mandating and regulating these businesses uh, so we have what we would consider a mixed economy and mixed economy is fascism uh, so like the moment you have things like the minimum wage. The minimum wage is not capitalism because it's the government mandating specific things on industry. When you have the government saying what you can and cannot uh, sell to consumers. Yeah, fascism is a weaponized pejorative. Capitalism itself. Oh, no, 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 no. Loud mouth. Me the medical industry and the airline industry are not fascist. The medical industry and the airline industry are socialist or communist because both the medical industry and the airline industry are controlled by the government. Pr private medical care is not something you can do in America. Teachers union is uh, public school is a communist uh, system. The public airlines, public medical industry, these are communist systems. Yes, you can't you do have private medical, private airline, and private uh, school systems, but that is a separate system. So we actually have both a communist school system and a capitalist school system. And wouldn't you know it, the capitalist school system works better. Pardon me, ma'am. Our public school system sorry, is shit. Woman, but I do not wish to speak with anyone presently. Our public medical system is shit. It's a blue woman, and you know, ma'am, please. Oh, she, I have to deliver uh, the map to her. Pardon me for intruding, ma'am, but is your name Tun Lyak? Yes, I'm Tun Lyak. I have a delivery for you. Oh, a map of the Northlands. Pretty I much. I almost forgotten I ordered it. Uh, Sorry the fact that, that we have a minimum wage in this country technically makes all of our no, industry no, fascist. I was looking for work. <sighs> but that's kindly, only no if you're working on a wage. This map now. If you have an industry where you get a salary, that's a bit different. Uh, so if you want, like, what industry is fascist? Like, let's say... Um, Uh, what, what are some good examples of of that? Okay, let's talk about. Uh, let, let's let's talk, let's say uh, a fascist industry would be. I'm trying to think of a good example. 
Um, cars. Cars. There you go. That's a good example. We have private ownership of cars, but the government says you cannot make cars without meeting these specific standards. They have to have this emission standard. They have to have these safety features, blah, blah, blah. And the government doing, putting all these regulations on cars makes it so that cars are more expensive. Why are you going to Coruscant by foot? I can ill afford the cost of passage on a ship bound for the Bay of Fire. And since I do not have a job, nor the prospect of getting one, I have little choice. Are you from Coruscant? No, I am from the Southlands. I have never been to Coruscant. Then why are you going there? Because I am told that in Coruscant, captains allow women to join their crew. Here, in Mercuria, they do not. So I've been told, but you shouldn't have to go. My else perspective to get a job. is the moment it the government gets fair. involved in any transaction, it is no longer it capitalism. Custom. And custom is a difficult thing to change. And my perspective also is fascism, which is the mixed economy, is the road to serfdom, the road to communism. So. The moment it stops becoming capitalism, it becomes simply how far towards communism are you willing to go? So when you talk about fascism, fascism is just communism in slow motion. Why are you so depressed? Is it that apparent to you? I do beg your pardon. The, the left likes to say that fascism is right wing. No, fascism is left wing. It's, okay. it's I don't just mind. communism in slow motion. Do not think you can, unless you were the captain of a Basically, ship. any and industry is, that is privately it. owned and has any and regulations and so is fascist. Help me. You are a navigator? Yes, and I have a letter to prove it. Do you want me to show it to you? No, I believe you. And you're looking for a job? Oh, okay. So uh, let me uh, uh, go back on that a bit. For many moons. Any industry that Most is private do not want and crew. has and so I am regulations put upon it by government is not necessarily fascist, but it is no longer capitalism. Fascism technically would require that the industry and the government are working together for the benefit of them both. Because in capitalism, it's industry and the consumer um, doing a free exchange for the benefit of the industry and the cons consumer. In a fascist market, it's the industry and the government working together for the benefit of industry and government, and usually the consumer gets screwed. So... Say, saying that any industry that has government mandates put upon it is fascist is going a bit too far. I will admit that because most of the time the industry does not want any regulations put upon it. So it's not fascist. It's when the industry is working with the government, that's when it becomes fascist. I got a job for you if you want it. A job? As a navigator? Yeah, on a boat called the White Dragon. We're leaving this afternoon, if you're interested. If you are serious, then yes. I am more than interested. But will the captain allow a woman as his navigator? This one will trust me. Many often, when it comes to big business, uh, big corporations will Talk willingly work Horatio with Nenever governments because governments will dragon. suppress their competition. Kevin, I sent you. The name's April Ryan. Things like Thank Big you, Pharma. April. Or I big ag. Lyak. I am most grateful to you. Will you be going with us? Yeah, so I'll see you there. Thank you so much. Fascism requires a willingness from the industry. But I will still contend that any, even without willingness, 
It's no longer capitalism the moment the government is involved. Did she sign the paper? I no, see I don't no, no no the military industry is not fascist. The military industry is communist. Because the military is run by the government. You're implying that there is that there is a uh, private control of the military. Yes, in America there's no capitalist industry anymore. The moment there is government regulations Herb, what's the difference between socialism and capitalism? There is no difference. The, the only difference between socialism and capitalism is how far, will, how far people are willing to admit that the people, the, the term the people means the government. So socialism and communism is, the, is a distinction without a difference. It's... Uh, people who say socialism, so, they say socialism is the people controlling the means of, of production. You know, the, the people controlling the ownership of goods and services and the means of production. But when they say the people, who manages the people? Someone has to manage it. And that someone is government. The, the people is the state. The state represents the people. The people is the state. The moment you say the people... It's communism, because that is the state. Capitalism is the individual, the person. The moment that you sacrifice the individual for the people, it becomes the state. The state is the people. That's why things like government-funded don't make sense, because government doesn't fund anything. The people fund things. The people is the government. Finally fire you. You're the most incompetent. The only difference between I socialism and communism is whether or not people are willing to admit that the people is the state. That's that it. It is a distinction without a difference. Ye gods, not only do I have to deal with your incompetent. Remember me? I'm trying. It just Goodbye. Please, for the sake of all things. Yep, Please, didn't get a signature. So now she's done with me. And, and that's what I'm saying. The difference between socialism and communism is whether or not people have owned up to the lie. The lie is that there is a difference between the people and the state. So the uh, Vladimir Lenin once said, said that the goal of socialism is communism. It's because there is no difference. The, will the people will call it socialism until they no longer have a need to lie to the people. In which case they'll say, ha ha, we got gotcha. you. It's been communis communism the whole time. Uh, so where's the lady for the boat? Wait. Assorted car. Whoops. It's the white dragon. It's the white dragon. Uh, Northrop Grumman is a military. Uh, they make military weapons. They are not the military. The military is communist. It is completely and wholly controlled by government. Now, you could talk about things like uh, private contractors. That's different. What? Are, what? What happened here? Great view. So I, I thought she went to the boat and then we could take off on the boat. Is she not taking off on the boat? Where am I supposed to be going?
No, the military weapons industry is actually one of the few truly capitalist industries left in the country, which is why it's one of the few industries that is actually thriving. Everything the government touches dies. The reason the military weapons industry has not died is because the military weapons industry is not communist. It is almost completely uh, capitalist. The military industry uh, survives simply by selling good products. There are no regulations you on weapons. From your trip north. It's good to see you again. I was concerned. Just because the customer is the government doesn't make it what? Uh, reliant on the government. I was up there. But then you have lost your wager. People will always have the need to kill each other. What trouble? The tyrant. They left the city all as one the evening before yesterday, and many of the vanguard with them. I fear there are dark times ahead. You don't mean war. The government says, make us a weapon that will kill people. War, yes. That's it. There's no other regulations. It's been an age and a half since our last war with the tyrant. The, the, the problem with the government involvement in the military now, weapons industry is the fact that the government pays too much. The tyrant are thirsty for blood. And the corruption and, and the bloat. Because it's not the government's bad money. Bad it's the people's bad money. Bad and they don't... When you're spending someone else's money, you don't care war. about waste. God, that's horrible. So the but government the city, wastes. It? It's a big city. Yes, but unfortunately not well armed. Mercuria has not seen war for centuries, and people grow soft, forget how to fight. It can easily be taken by a strong army, and so I fear our safety and yours. What did you mean when you forgive an old man his misgivings, April? But I, I agree. Everything the government has is stolen. Of course you should have. With what? Oh, you're not arguing With that. You're, we're, that's not what we're that talking about here. We're talking about whether or not the, a military-industrial uh, uh, corporation selling something to a government is capitalism or not. That you are the one born into the heaviest duty of the. The mil the. The Northrop government doesn't care who they sell uh, their products to. They just care about getting money. It is a truly no, capitalist a system. I'm not your guardian. That's not possible. It is certain. I had my doubts, unfortunately. Northrop Grumman says it doesn't. Cost us uh, the, the government doesn't say to Northrop Grumman saying you're not allowed to uh, build this weapon. You are stronger in the balance than anyone before you. God damn, Cortez, he didn't say anything about... That's my if point. The government is not putting here. regulations on Northrop Grumman. Now, the government may tell the public, oh, we're here. not letting Northrop Grumman maybe make chemical know. weapons or, or bioweapons, but we all know that's a lie. There are no regulations on Northrop Grumman. I'm telling you now because you cannot stay here. You are too valuable. You must leave. If Northrop Grumman could make more money selling arms to Russia rather than selling arms to America, they would do that without a second thought. I am leaving for Laius this afternoon. I don't know if Northrop Grumman is making chemical weapons. I'm saying if Northrop Grumman wanted to, they would. They would make it for the U.S. government. It doesn't matter. The U.S. government is telling the people that they're not making chemical weapons. It's irrelevant. They've been saying that for years. They've been making chemical weapons in the Wuhan lab. Oh, Tobias. I Even though it's technically anything. illegal. You are not My point is that the is U.S. government does not put the regulations on the weapons industry. For the, day when the, 13th the weapons industry is an actual capitalist society and because it is not here. subject to government Maybe regulations. Take it. it is the talisman of the balance. Known to but a few. It is mentioned in one text only. The scriptures of reunification. One and like I said, just because the Northrop Grumman's client is the what government is, is irrelevant. 
The scripture speaks not of its If they can sell trillions of dollars in weapons to Elon Musk, they would go with Elon Musk over the US government. It's irrelevant to them. They don't care who the customer is. They are a capitalist company. Thanks, Tobias. I really do appreciate it, even though I wish I didn't have to accept it. You are the guardian, child. Your fate is both glorious and terrible. But it is your fate. If you deny it, you deny our future. But I have faith in you, April. No, I think it's because they just want to what kill people. What if I screw up? The balance provides. I, it, it's got nothing to do with what elect, elected officials care about an unregulated market. It's that they are a customer and they want the best products. And the best products require an unregulated market. You want... Northrop Grumman or other military uh, weapons manufacturer to make the best weapons, you don't put regulations on it. The one requirement is we want a weapon that will kill our enemy as most efficiently as possible. And you're going to tell that uh, your weapons manufacturer, oh, don't make any weapons that will actually kill our enemies. No, they don't do that. It's not, nothing to do with the regulated market. It's about their ability to kill people. And the election officials do not care about you. What was it that Mike Pence said, said this weekend? What did Mike Pence say? He says, uh, that's not my concern. Elected official, officials do not care. Elected officials just want to embezzle their funds and kill their enemies. They don't care about efficiency, which is why they overspend. They don't care about efficiency on, on money. They care about efficiency on defeating their enemies. Who is their enemy? Who is the enemy of the, the people like Mike Pence? You may think, oh, it's, it's, it's uh, Vladimir Putin and Russia. No, no, no. Their enemy is their, the people. People think, oh, uh, America is sending all this money to Ukraine because we need to defeat Russia. No! No! The war was not made to be won. The war was made to be perpetuated. And as long as the war is perpetuated, they can continue oppressing their real enemies. The people. You. Finally. We are ready. And we must away before it's too late. We still have another six or seven hours of daylight today. Come, come aboard. The only, the reason why we Can are I sending money to Ukraine is water. not to defeat Russia. No. It's to make sure Russia doesn't well, end the war. That's why Donald Trump is such a threat. Because he ended four wars. The war is not made to be won. The war is made to be perpetuated. Because they get rich by oppressing you. You are the enemy. Chapter 6. The Chaos Storm. If I remember, the boat sinks oh. and then I go to the water God, people. My guts have been cleaned out because Captain Neveve is an awful captain. <sighs> Why does the horizon have to keep rolling back and forth like that? That's the cargo hold and crew quarters down there. My bed's conveniently located right below the opening. To accommodate for those refreshing saltwater showers. No, to accommodate all the women who want to look at you while you sleep. I'm sorry, all the crew members who want to watch you sleep. I'll take an axe. All the semen. That's correct. It's not salt water. It's semen. It's a flower sack. 
That salt you're tasting in the liquid that's dripping into your room, that's not salt water. It's a flower sack. It's a sturdy wooden chest. It's empty. <laughs> Our hammocks. Watch! My nose is itching. Are you sleeping on duty again? Storm front! Twist! Heading our way! Looks like a right old bugger, too, Harvey. By the mercy of Jal, it's a chaos storm. See, w once you understand come from this that simple and phrase that I said, the said a moment ago, the war is not made to be won. The war is made to be perpetuated. Navigator, once you understand that phrase, from the storm everything the government over. does in uh, foreign uh, policy makes sure complete sense. The best foreign policy president we have ever had in this country is Donald Trump. But he is the antithesis to every fallen foreign policy uh, premise we've had in the past hundred years. Which is why he's the enemy. Captain? Sir? Leave me be, girl. I have work to do. We must avoid the storm lest it comes on us like Jaws callous heel. Can you name us. any other presidents who but ended four us, wars right? and got huh. us into none? You can forget about that. We must avoid the dangerous waters of the islands and head straight for Guienne if we're to stand a chance about running the storm. But I have to get to Elias as soon as possible. The fate of worlds depends on it. And the fate of my ship and my crew depends on and us. And that's just in four years. Again. Now leave me be. He would have probably ended the other three wars if he was given all, all eight years. Captain? Sir? Leave. What's going on, Tom? Does she have three eyes? A storm approaches April, and it is no ordinary storm. What do you mean by no ordinary storm? Look to the clouds. Do they appear normal to you? They look strange, it's true. It is a chaos storm. A strong storm caught in a magical vortex, drawn to strong magic like bees to honey. I have never seen one with my own eyes, but I have heard stories. Oh, by the way, that, that phrase, the war was not made to be won, it was made to be perpetuated, I, I believe that's George Orwell from 1984. What have you heard about chaos storms? That they appear only rarely. If you know anything about 1984, in, in 1984, it is also there was a continuous war between uh, West... Uh, I can't remember the name of the three countries. Well, Nixon was a good president, mostly. He had some domestic policy problems, but foreign policy he was very good at. Uh, let's see, it, there was West Asia, East Asia, and I can't remember what, what the name of the third country was in 1984. But like every five years in 1984, the wars would, would change. Like two of the, it would always be two of them against the one, and then a few years later, it would be two of the other ones, a, a different two against another one, and then a different two against another one. <coughs> and the whole point, and it was constantly people forgetting about who we were at war with and why. I mean, honestly, I, I think what Nixon did with China was... It, it was mostly right. It's just it didn't work out the way we wanted to because of people like Clinton. So people like Clinton who sabotaged any relations we had with China and North Korea for that matter. Uh, but 
the the whole point of normalizing relations with China was working, especially with people like Deng Xiaoping, who had brought capitalism to China. Can we escape a chaos storm? The if idea behind Nixon normalizing relationship harbor, with China was he felt that uh, normalizing relations with, with China would make China more like America. Away, but it gains <clears throat> fast. I do not know, April. But because of uh, people like George H.W. Bush and Clintons and then the next Bush and Obama, uh, what happened is we ended up becoming more like China instead of the, the reverse. Will you still be able to get me to Elias tomorrow? I am afraid not. The captain has ordered our course changed south to get us away from the rocky waters around the islands. Which is why I'm we definitely looking forward to Trump's again. second term because I think he has then. learned from his Perhaps mistakes the same way. Uh, he he learned not him. only from his mistakes but Care Reagan's mistakes. And for his crew. And he would not risk like, it for anything. Reagan for and uh, H.W. were not uh, close. They, they did not like each other. But Reagan, H.W. Uh, was forced upon Reagan because it was the only way he could get support from the GOP. Same thing that happened with Trump. Pence was forced on Trump because it was the only way he can get support from the GIP, GOP. In fact, the majority of people in Trump's cabinet, he could only... Uh, he only put on because it was the only way for him to get support from the GOP. Uh, this would be different in Trump's term because Trump has a lot of support outside the GOP and the GOP is getting soundly rejected by the Republican Party. You still need my magic to get wind in your sails. And Trump not having to worry about the being a lame, be lame uh, Trump being Doesn't a lame duck no would definitely make it easier for him to put who I'm he sorry. wants in his cabinet. Once we reach Guyenne, I am certain you will find passage to the island. The GOP hated Trump just as much as the time. DNC the hated Trump. Failing. I am sorry. It Maybe is more so. The real enemy is not I'll the enemy in front of you. The real enemy is the enemy Thank behind you. you, ready to stab you in the back. All right, I wasn't rock? paying attention because I was talking. What am I doing here? Why does it have to keep rolling back and forth like that? Captain? Sir? Leave. Those are the captain's private quarters and offices. It's a glass orb with a strange magic... Well, there are definitely certain members in Could the geo... Kind of okay, I'll wait for you to get back. It's the apple barrel. It's half empty. And aside from whatever fish we're able to catch... chest it's empty the cargo hold and crew quarters the talisman of the balance Tobias gave this to me well what is my mission right now I really wasn't paying attention talking a ton I have a question. Certainly. What kind of compass are you using? It is just a normal spirit compass. 
When we are not navigating by the stars or by the sun, we use this. What's a spirit compass? I forget that you are not familiar with the sea. A spirit compass points always to the magical North Pole, and thus we may navigate according to it. It is very precise, unless affected by a strong magical source. storm affect the accuracy of the spirit compass if the storm catches up with us perhaps but I do not think so only a very focused magical field in close proximity to the compass would be able to affect it tell me again what's a very strong magical thank I hope I'll let thank you okay so I need to use magic Near the compass. I can't do that while somebody's around. Captain? Sir? Leave. All right, so how do I get them to go away? I need to make myself invisible. I'll save it for when I really need it. Below deck, no one will see me drink the potion. I'll save it for when I really need it. I really need it now. I'll save it for when I really need it. chest it's empty hmm. I'll just get in trouble besides it's open Save it for when I really need it. I'll save it for when I really need it. Save it for when I really need it. I'll save it for when I, I really need, need it. Those are the captain's private quarters and offices. I'll let you go back to work. Thank you. I can't do that while somebody's around. Captain? How do I get him to go away? Sir? Leave. It's a piece of the stone disc I got from the Bonda people. Uh, 
Does he want some candy? Welcome with a push pin. Tickle his nose. I guess he's not around. We should try again later. I guess he's not around. I should try again later. There's not a lot to do on this boat, so... Oh, I can... Okay, I didn't realize I can go in the barrel. And get an Ugh, apple. Gross! People do... Here's a nice... Who's Jim? Yes, he will end the war in 24 hours. It'll be very easy. All he needs to do is say, we're not giving money and weapons to Ukraine anymore. Done. Why? To keep him well fed and happy? It really is that simple. Keep him well fed and happy? The apple barrel. I feel too sick to eat anything. I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. There's only three screens, and there's not a lot to do. Yesterday, I had a uh, pork chop, double cut pork chop. I'm a good Jew, so I eat a lot of pork. I like pork. <laughs> Jim? You look like a real sailor. Mikey. Why why does she keep saying Jim? Is that a reference? That I missed? Well, you have to remember that the majority of religious tenets are religious tenets because they're things that have worked for thousands of years. So the idea of these old 2,000-year-old, 2000, 2,000-year-old religions not eating pork, there was actually, it, it's actually something that worked for thousands of years because pigs are filthy. And before the modern era, eating pork was actually very dangerous. And so uh, these Abrahamic religions that banned pork actually thrived because fewer people died from trigonosis. Now we have the modern era where pigs are a lot cleaner.
I, I'm, I'm stuck here. I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. The horizon have to keep roll the cargo hold and crew quarters. Being able to stop and cook pork wasn't always an option. and offices. I think I'm going to have to look up what to do because there's only three screens and there's nothing left to interact with. So I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. The longest journey. Walk. Chapter 6. And the website doesn't work. It's blank. So now the assets loaded. All the images are broken. Seriously? I need the worm and this is actually the use of the sticky candy them with the apple and give it to Captain Nebeve and then he thinks Get the food's it, gone guy. bad. Eat your heart out. That makes sense. have invaded the apple barrel cursed be the balance first the storm now this is there no end to the horrors let me see jowls infected arsehole you be right those are worms all right vicious snarling wheat worms driven mad by their hunger for a change of diet <laughs> i love the as writing in this I game tell, that was the only apple infected but i could be wrong Good of you to catch it, girl, before it's spread any further. I'll have to go pluck the apples immediately. They must be saved. And now that he's gone, I could fuck up the compass and crash the boat. 
Never is a fine captain. I'm just an asshole. I can't do that when somebody's around. Now how do I get rid of her? Do you want me to relieve you at the wheel for a while? I am not sure if this is such a good idea, April. What's the big deal? I just hold it straight, right? Well, I could do with a short break to stretch my legs. Fine, but I will be back soon. And if anything happens, just call out for help. Of course, thanks. Nuh-uh. Like they won't notice if I turn the boat around? I'll have to think of something else. So if the Welcome back, her. in that direction, when we were on course for Elias, and now it's pointing in this direction. Oh, hell. I'll just wing it. Use the force, April. After all, who's the chosen one here? Ton, need some assistance up here. I think I may have strayed off course a bit when I was at the wheel. I did not feel the boat turning. Well, I have a feeling we're gonna miss Gien by a couple of hundred kilometers if you don't correct our course. Let me check the compass. When this game by was balance, being developed, right, Star Wars was still special. You were You're right. Mistake, or we might have ended up pierced on the deadly reefs of Tagate. I will correct our course immediately. Sorry about that. Oh no, I let you take the wheel. I'm just glad we are back on course. Y yeah, back on course. <clears throat> is it my imagination or is the storm getting closer? By the balance, you are right. The storm is catching up with us. We might have to ride it out. It is good we are nowhere near the islands, or we would have to worry about reefs as well. Reefs? Nobody said anything about reefs. Ton, I have something to tell you. Captain! Sir! We need you on the bridge. The storm is closing in. By the foul bowels of jaw, you're right, Lyak. It's closing in faster than any storm I've seen or heard, chaos or otherwise. It's like it's chasing something or someone. All right, listen up. The storm's going to hit in an hour or two. And I want everything to be ready. Tighten the hatches, strap down the cargo, wake up the watch, and by Joe's big toe, someone put a lid on the apple barrel. Bob Iger has completely destroyed Disney. And with that, he's destroyed Marvel, Lucas, uh, Pixar, Fox at this point. Oh, God. No, nope, Bob awesome. Iger. Bob Iger could have got rid of Kathleen Kennedy at any time. Kathleen Kennedy only had control of LucasArts or Lucasfilm. There's still several other companies involved. She looks busy. He looks very busy. Those are those are the captain's private quarters and offices. Which Sargon video?
Sargon produces a lot of videos they with really the Lotus Seeders. They this up before the hold is filled with water. What am I supposed to be doing? What is that link? Gender Wars, the last snowflake? Five years ago. Oh, yeah. Well, red leather media, media, I feel, has lost the plot, too. I mostly stick to uh, uh, Geeks and Gamers Neurotic Crew. He looks very busy. What is that? What is that you have there? It's a necklace I misplaced, but I found it again, so no need to worry. What was it doing next to the spirit compass? Let me see that necklace right now. It's a valuable family heirloom. I don't let anybody touch it. Give it here. This talisman has the mark of the balance and of the sentinel. This is an object of great magic. The balance be cursed, girl. What by Charles' hideous countenance did you think you were doing? I didn't think it would do any harm. Are you this stupid, girl? Do you think this a game? I should never have made that deal. Women at sea. Joel was right. Damn his immortal soul to the darkest pits of chaos. Get your arse to the brig right now, and stay there. When, if we get to land, I'll see you before a court, or may Jal's assassin strike me down with his three-bladed poison sword. Check the compass, Lyak, and correct our course accordingly. And don't let this wench touch anything from now on. I here. love Captain Nebebe. He's I awesome. Need to place this accursed talisman as far away from the spirit compass as possible. Throw it overboard. She looks busy. Those are the captain's private quarters and offices. I have to report to the brig. <laughs> what just happened? I love oh, the way point and click thing. adventure games were made back in the day. I mean, uh, Final Fantasy 7 and 8 were also, and 9, were the same way, where you're actually walking on an invisible plane and everything else is just a background that moves. I love the idea of, you know, this painted uh, picture deck and then the movie running in the background that's uh, just a movie of waves. I love it. It's fantastic. since I chopped firewood, but I think I'll be able to knock the lock off pretty clean. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! I just killed everybody. <laughs> A deep blue mirror.
Crow's the best. Thank the balance, she's all right. Are you all right, April? April? Are you sleeping? She's sleeping, bless her little heart. Boy, is she cute. Too bad she's just a chick and not a bird. April, wake up! Crow, I was so worried I thought the storm got you. Me? <laughs> Honey, I'm the sidekick. Didn't you ever read any legends? The sidekick always survives. Not always. So you're fine? Sometimes you kill off the sidekick. You singe tail feathers, and I'm so charged to up motivate the hero. when I try to peck something. Other than that, better than ever. The sea air does wonders for my allergies. I didn't realize you had allergies. Exactly. Do you know what happened to the crew? As far as I know, they got away in the lifeboat. And they left you. There was a lifeboat? One of those magic fold-up types, yeah. I guess they forgot all about me. I think the captain said something like, I let the wench drown and justice be done. <laughs> but uh, I could have been wrong. I love Captain Nevervick. <laughs> Any idea where the lifeboat is heading? South, I guess. From what I can remember of the old man's stories about the sea, Tagate would be the closest civilized island. Any idea how I'm gonna get to the islands now? You could swim. Humans swim, don't they? They must, or you wouldn't be here now. I don't swim. And nobody can swim that far. There's no land visible in any direction. Well, I'd suggest flying, but you don't have the necessary equipment. Why don't you try and find the closest island? I could do that, but I'd have to leave you on your own. Crow, I'll be fine. All right, all right. Don't blame a bird for trying to be a gentleman. Gentle bird, whatever. I'll be back as soon as I can. Don't go anywhere. Where would I go? Girls always disappear on me. Trust me. I'm going to disappear on him. I'm going to go under the water and talk to the fish people. What the hell is that? Uh-oh, for some reason the story of the bloodthirsty cannibal merman of the Sea of Song suddenly pops to mind. This is all that's left afloat of the white dragon. I'm either the luckiest person alive or the unluckiest person about to die a slow, horrible death. I'll save it for when I really need it. Where'd the sea creature go? Do I have to give it something? a long way from anything. I didn't know the ocean could look so big. Not a thing in sight. Not a thing in sight. Debris from the white dragon. Hi. Do you speak Arcadian? Guess not. Doesn't seem so bloodthirsty and cannibalistic up close, though, does it? Be one of the mermen I heard horror stories about. Hey, 
come over here and let me pet you. You're just like a seal, aren't you? <gasps> If I remember properly, I have to eat some black stone that'll let me uh, breathe underwater. Oh, bloody typical. I told her she didn't believe me. Girls always disappear on me. Always. It's a drawing of a man cutting his finger open and squeezing some blood into a bowl together with some green, mossy stuff. Then he mashes it together and... Oh, gross! Oh, and it lets dips him a talk. a pearl in it and eats it. That's barbaric. Maybe the stories about the cannibal merman were true after all. But hey, in the next one, he seems capable of speaking fluently with the creatures that brought me here. I wouldn't mind that. Get me the hell out of here. The walls look organic. And those... I think they're polyps of some kind. There's fresh oxygen coming through here. These polyps must process the oxygen in the water somehow. That's how I'm able to... It's a drawing of a man. A human. Sticking a strange... In the next drawing, he seems to be able to... breathe. This gets infected, and I have to chew off my finger to fight the gangrene. I'm suing somebody. Ouch. The things I do to save the world. Worlds. There's fresh oxygen coming through here. This whole structure looks organic, and there are polyps living inside the walls. This is so disgusting. Where do I find the black I pearl? There's a large black pearl inside the seashell. Oh, found the black pearl. It's a drawing of a man mixing some green, mossy stuff. Green, mossy stuff. Gotta find the green, mossy stuff. Almost deliberate. There it is. I can't eat this. I have to go back into here. Okay. I've 
always had trouble swallowing pills, especially huge golden magical ones. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> and now I can talk to the sea creatures. Mer person. Mer man. Saying? Yes, we understand. Weird. I have this nagging feeling in the back of my mind that I shouldn't be able to understand what you're saying, but I do. You have passed the two tests of the gatherer, Landwalker. Breathing water and speaking the tongue of the Mer. You can serve us now. Serve you? You have been brought here to serve us as the gatherer of Tanyan. What's Tanyan? Tanyan is life. Tanyan brings light to darkness and sustenance to our caves. Tanyan keeps the snapjaw from our children and heats us when it is cold. Tanyan is life. Where does Tanyan come from? Our gatherers collect it from the caves and shores of the islands. But there is less Tanyan to be found each season, and we need help. How does Tanyan do all those things you said? Tanyan provides warmth and light. It draws the harvest close. Harvest? The creatures of the sea that we eat, the golden tail, and the weed eye, and the sand eater. Fish? You're talking about fish. The harvest, yes. That is what we said. The harvest is drawn to the light and to the heat. But the snapjaw are clever. They stay away. They know the light allows us better aim with our spears. Why can't you gather Tanyan yourself? We do. But we cannot move far from our cities, or the snapjaw will hunt us and eat us. If we travel in force, we leave our men and children without guard. And we cannot travel too close to the islands, or the wind demons may catch eye of us. They leave our gatherers alone, though, so you have nothing to fear. Who are the wind demons? Ugly, leathery creatures who defy nature to fly up there in the sky. They are evil and live to destroy our people. Don't the Snapjaw kill the gatherers? Rarely. Your meat is bitter and tough, not soft and tender like ours. I won't ask how you know that. I think I've learned enough about Tanyan for now. You have learned nothing, but your training will teach you what you need to know. Are your people called the Miram? We are the Miram. Most landwalkers call us Mermen or Mer people. But the Merrim was our name in truth. Who are you, man? We are the queen of the third city of the Merrim, enlightened keeper of the Tanyan, protector of the light. I'm sorry, your... Your Majesty, I really had no idea you were a queen. We are just a queen. Our function is to serve the people, to light our cities, provide food for our men and children and to protect them from the snapjaw that hunt us in the dark. Do you know where my ship went down? The vessel you foolishly travel in above the water? It rests not far from the city, just past and beyond the Landwalker's bubble where you were first brought. I need a talisman. I think it is dead. Yes, it's dead. Where did you say I could find the shipwreck? Just past and beyond the Landwalker's bubble. Do you know the island of Elias? Yes, we know the island of Elias. Our gatherers find Tanyan there, and the Merrim once had a city in the shallow waters below it. Can you bring me there? Until your training is complete, you cannot go gathering. We cannot risk losing you to the Snapjaw, or to have you desert your duties to our people. How long will my training take? Six cold oceans. Six years? Sure, that makes sense. Everything in this world takes ages. I've been 
told that you worship an old god who lives in the deep. How did you come by this forbidden knowledge? I picked it up on my way here. Could you take me to him? You? No, we cannot. Unless you are near him, you are not even allowed to speak of our sleeping god. Thanks for your time. We will call on you soon to begin your service. All right, so what is this crystal I picked it's up? It's the crystal I took from the Marian's home. It's a colorful candy. Leave the spear be. It belongs to the water still. Sorry. so thick and tangled. It looks almost deliberate. I guess that's a snap job. Close enough to attack. All right, can I generate light somehow? I'll save it for when I really need it. I'll save it for when I really need it. Can I go invisible? I'll save it for when I really need it. I mean, going invisible to escape a snap jaw seems pretty. Necessary. It's the precious substance called Tan Yan. It's the precious substance called Tan Yan. It's a spear. A harpoon, I guess it's called in maritime terminology. It's the crystal I took from the Marian's home. Do you need this? No. It is of no value to us. Where did you find it? It looks very old. I believe one of the children found it just outside the city. Not far from... We have used it for decoration in our home. another one of those crystals buried in the sand among the seaweed. It's the crystal I found among the seaweed. Okay, so now if I put the second crystal in that spot, what will happen? Nothing. Can't do it. Now that I've got the four crystals, let's go meet Diva Plava Laguna at Fost in Paradise. See if we can find Corbin Dallas. Get some multi passes. Here's 
It's one of the two crystals I found inside. It's one of the two crystals I found inside the abandoned cave. Okay, what am I supposed to be doing with these crystals? Can we talk for a minute? Yes, Gavin. Who or what is the water stiller? The water stiller is in our prophecies. She is the land walker who will make us a people united and end all strife. So you're at war with Adamerum? No. And so the time for the water stiller is still to come. We are at peace with Adamerum. What else can you tell me about the She will come among us by providence, and she will take... What is it? We do not know. But she will open up the ancient shrine and bring light to the darkness. She will destroy a snapjaw with her spear. She sounds like a... She is the water... Thanks for your time. My time is yours, Gatherer. All right, so I'll... I get the spear... Leave the spear... Sorry. After I restore the light... How do I restore the light? It's a drawing of a man mixing some green mo- It is fifth element. Holy shit. Winnebago is a fascist name. I need to figure out which stone goes where. But I can only see one side of the crystal at a time. Ah, damn it, wrong one. So the first one will go here, maybe? Yep, that's the one. Okay, first one's correct. Second one has fish. And arrow, which means it could go here. It has to go there. It's the only way it could go. There we go. And this one has fish, so it has to go here. There we go, which means this one goes here.
Something's wrong. No. That's not right. It has to be mirrored. But how would this possibly work? It's stuck. I don't think it's supposed to move. Oh, shit. Can move. Stuck. I don't think it's supposed to move. But how does this work? Oh, everything is opposite. I get it. It's not what's there, it's what it's pointing to. Everything is opposite. Yep, that makes sense. That's not right. How do I do this one? And that's pointing that way. This one seems... It's inscribed with the image of a wave, probably representing water. It's a long spear with hooks, probably a harpoon. Yeah, this one doesn't make sense to me. This inscription looks like a huge pyramidic structure with an eye in the middle. This ring is inscribed with the image of a bird. This ring is inscribed with the image of fire. This ring is inscribed with the image of fire. This ring is inscribed with the image of fire. This ring is inscribed with the image of a clay pot. This ring is inscribed with the image of fire. This ring is inscribed with the image of a clay pot. All right, so the ring is correct. Fish eats the bird. Fire is the opposite of water. Pot is spear. This ring is inscribed with the image of a mirror. One-eyed pyramid. Uh... I don't know, the whole thing just seems wrong to me because this is backwards. So I'm not quite sure how to solve this one.
That seems right to me. And then that seems right to me, but this one is backwards. So it can't be right, because it's backwards. This inscription looks like a fish. This ring is inscribed with the image of a bird. Figured it out. The crystals on the altar light up the entire. It looks like some kind of visual history of the Marin people. According to this first tablet. Oh my god. It turns out the Marin came to Earth inside a type of spaceship from another planet. They're aliens? Not that anything should surprise me at this point, but still. They look very different back then, though. Must have been a long time ago. The ship looks to have been a living thing, according to these drawings. Wait a minute. Could this be their ancient god? One of the dragons? I think it has to be. After they arrived on Earth, their species divided I did not, two. loud now. One crawled into the sea, the other onto land. I've got no one to see movies with down here in Florida, and I don't want to see movies this alone. This must be a while later, because the Marum look like they do today. At least the ones who went into the sea do. The other ones? They have wings. If I'm going to guess, I'd say that the ones who went to live on land became the Alation, which means the Marum and Alation are related. In this one, they're living close to each other and in peace. And it seems they share equally in the production of Tan Yen, which attracts fish for both peoples to eat. So the then leathery people who are at war? War, it looks like. And the Marum and Alation move away from each other. In this last one, Tanyan is beginning to become scarce, and the Marum are losing many of their young ones to the Snapjaw. Hell yeah, watch they Sound of Freedom. The ocean, and they forget their common heritage. At the very end, there's a prophecy, I think. The Marum and the Alation joining hands once again. When they do, Tanyan becomes plentiful and both people prosper. These two then wore one day, it seems. These two then one It's a circular indentation framed with the image of two dragons biting each other's tails, almost exactly like the markings on my talisman. An Ouroboros of two it's dragons? An indentation roughly the size of my talisman, framed with the familiar symbolism of the balance. I have to get my talisman. for a minute. Yes, gatherer. Why was the cave with the altar and the wall painting just outside the city abandoned? What? 
Show us this cave. Immediately. I'm hungry. Cave by placing the crystal from your palace, together with three more crystals I found on the altar, and moving the stone rings into their correct positions. Can it be that you are... But you are a gatherer. You cannot be she. Who? Who can't I be? The water stiller. She who, by prophecy, will deliver us from strife and unite us as one people. She who will uncover the ancient shrine. Looks pretty ancient to me. This is the shrine, yes. And you have brought light to the darkness as well. But the other prophecies, you have not fulfilled them. You have not proven yourself to be the water stiller yet. How can I do that? Come back with us, and we will tell you. How can I prove that I'm the water stiller? You have uncovered the ancient shrine and brought light to the darkness. But this could be just chance. You must show us the witness you carry of your mission to the balance. The talisman! Damn, I lost it when the storm hit us. You must also kill a snapjaw with a spear, and then you will have proven yourself to us. Once you have done this, we will aid you in your quest to make us one people. Who is the water stick? She is... Where do I... Take this spear and slaughter us. Where do I find... If you are... I already know where there's a water stiller. I mean, the snap jaw. That's what I need the spear for. Let's go kill that snap jaw. The snap jaw's keeping to the shadows, waiting for me to get close enough. The snap jaw's keeping to the shadows, waiting for me to get close enough to attack. Die, snap jaw scum! Okay, that was easy. I expected more fanfare from that. I'll need something to bring back to prove that I killed this. This tooth will do just fine. Oh man, that's sharp. I had no idea Snapjaw had razor teeth. If I did, better not think about that now. It's dead. Dead. All right, so it. how do I get my talisman? Talisman should be in in one of these boxes, right? How do I go in the boat to look for my talisman? Oh, there we go. Found it. There's a tooth from the dreaded snapjaw that got. You have fulfilled that part of the prophecy. Here's proof of my mission a magical talisman with the sun. You have fulfilled that part of the prophecy. Roughly the size of my talisman, framed with the familiar symbolism of the balance. These tablets tell the story of how the then war one day, it seems. What the hell is a niche? It's a small niche containing what appears to be a shard of a stone. It's a piece of the stone disc. No, wait. It's only one half of a piece. Yes, Gab. Thanks for your time. My time is yours, Gatherer. 
I've taken from you the object you've kept hidden for generations. It's part of the disk that will restore the balance and save the twin worlds from chaos. You have indeed fulfilled all but one of the prophecies. You might yet be the water stiller. We would not have thought she would come in our lifetime. Good. Then you'll take me to your sleeping god. There is but one more prophecy you must fulfill. No, there, there she more? did a thing. Sure, there's always that you more. missed. That's the fun part about prophecies. A magic must pebble. Our people once again. But you said you were united, that there's no strife between Miram. The water stiller will come to bring our people together again, to unite us and save us. This has still not come to pass. Until you do so, the prophecies of the water stiller have not fully come to pass. I think I know now what the prophecy the Miram are at peace with each other. Yes? You're they are a right now they might be. But it wasn't What do you mean? Once upon a time. What? I'm just telling you what I saw in your temple. This was a very long time ago, and the one species soon divided into... But both the Miram and the Elation were dependent on the other for various reasons. Amongst them, Ten Yen, which was abundant where the two people lived in... Apparently, there was peace between the two people for a very... Both the Elation and the Miram moved far away from each other, and ever... I think the only way to save the Miram from a slow death, and the Elation as well, probably... How can we believe you, Water Stiller? Your words are too outrageous. If you don't believe me, check out the temple walls. But what will our people say? What You're their queen, and so you'll have to make them understand and accept their heritage. You must go to them, then, to find if our temple speaks the truth. I guess I must. Water still... We will bring you to the shores of their closest island. Does this mean you believe... You are the water stiller. You are prophecy. One of our people will bring you to Elias. A night's journey from here. Once there, you will find the elation and speak with their leaders. If they agree to meet... I promise I'll do my... Safe journey. We will hold on to the piece of the disc you found in the temple. If the winged demons, the elation... Wow, these chapters are going fast. I think I've already did three chapters. I'll be right back. I need food.
Today I've got chicken. Let it cool down a bit. get lost if I just wander off into the jungle with no idea what the island looks like or where I'm heading. It's some kind of giant crab. It sounds like the poor thing's in a lot of pain. Yeah, the shell does look way too tight. Maybe he's outgrown it but can't shed it. Or whatever it's called. I'll just take a shot here and ask you. Is there any chance you speak like a Real language like um, Arcadian or English? All tongue. Click clack. Clackety clack okay. clack clack. Now, is there some kind of magic I have to learn, or potion I have to drink, or eat, or ingest in some way to learn your language? Because that's usually how it goes. No? Too bad. Although I'm glad I don't have to draw blood or swallow a stone or something. I can't help but feel that you're asking me for help, though. It's the strangest thing. After all, you're just clicking your claws, aren't you? It's not as if you're really talking, is it? I get the strangest feeling that it's... I can't break the shell. They still have an axe? No. This is paradise. It's the village of the giant crabs. Hey, that sounds like a great name for a B-movie. Village of the giant crabs. It's a big statue. I can't believe there was a time when I disliked Brussels sprouts. They're delicious. Excellent spot for fishing. The top half of the statue depicts a creature with a big mouth calling out. The bottom part of the statue depicts a creature with large ears listening to something. It's a triangular hole, like a keyhole. It's a creature with a big mouth. It's a creature with large ears. Do I spin this or something? It's an old fireplace. You know, when you're a kid, there's a lot of healthy foods you don't like. Vegetables, mostly. The top half of the statue depicts a big mouth creature calling out. The bottom half of the statue depicts a large eared creature listening intently. Peace out, Herf. It's a triangular hole, like a keyhole. It's a creature with a big mouth. It's a creature with large ears. It's the ruins of an old city. It's a deep hole, more like a crevice actually, caused by some kind of seismic activity. 
God, it must be at least 50 meters down. Good thing I have a rope. It out into a huge cave just below, and there's water at the bottom. Can I go down with a rope? Tie it to a tree. Tie it to a statue. No. She's basically Lara Croft. Big nests, once housing the elation, but now empty and in disrepair. of a stone structure that probably fell down here through the crevice. There's a piece amongst the rubble that looks like a bolt or a key. It's intact. It's the remains of a stone structure that probably fell down here through That's a Marum city. It's a deserted Marum city. Well, she did say they used to have a city. The, bo the bottom half of the statue depicts a large Oh, I didn't mean to pick that up. The bottom half of the statue. Oh, it's broken. Oh, one more. Nope, one more. Ah. Uh. It's, it's the ruined and it's, it's a huge volcanic mountain the top dense jungle Whoops. Are these supposed to be looking specific ways? What pattern am I looking for here? 
bottom part of the statue depicts a creature. Top half of the statue depicts a creature with a big mouth calling out. Bottom part of the statue depicts a creature with. So one sends, one receives. Obviously. So I've, I've got to get them to point specific directions based on what? It's a, it's a, it's a village populated by giant crabs. I can get lost if I just wander off into the jungle with no idea what the island looks like or where I'm heading. bottom half of the stack. The bottom half of the statue to the top half of the statue depicts a big mouthed creature calling out. It's a creature with large ears. It's a creature with a big mouth. It's the dense jungle. It's a, it's a, it's a huge volcanic mountain. It's a triangular hole, like a keyhole. It's a kind of stone key carved into the uncanny likeness of a key with a head on the end. It's a triangular hole, like a keyhole. It's a triangular hole, like a keyhole. No, that didn't work.
I had to get a toothpick. Hmm. I had to have missed something. I feel like it's a, it's a village, I need to find a noise and transmit that up into the jungle. Oh, God damn it. Oh no, the game crashed on me. Yay for all those saves. Take the rope. <laughs> hmm. Dense jungle, dense jungle. get lost if I just wander off into the jungle with no idea what the island looks like or where I'm heading well maybe crow can scout it out I thought you drowned. I was completely miserable. And the chicks on this island are so prissy. They don't even care for a kiss unless you're all settled down with a nest in your own territory. <laughs> Glad to see you haven't lost the gift of the gab crow. Lady, you have no idea how limited bird Twitter can be. It's all hi this and here I am that all damn day long. This came I out in '99. Conversation in <laughs> days. Well, you're making up for it now. I never know when you're gonna go a wall on me again. I had a little adventure under the sea. Oh, I didn't know humans had gills. We don't. Well. I do, I think. At least I can breathe underwater now. Cool. Not as cool as being able to fly, of course, but still. Hey, does that mean you're a mermaid? Hardly. I don't have a tail. What did you do after I saw you last? Well, it took a while, but I found land. Not this island, just a rock with a couple of trees, basically. But when I went back to tell you, you disappeared. I thought you'd gone bonkers from thirst and hunger and drowned yourself or something, so I decided I'd better find solid ground myself or I'd suffer the same fate. And then I found this place. Nice, isn't it? And the best part is, there are no hunters. Only a bunch of big crabs on the east side of the island and a volcano. And the volcano. I'm gonna walk around for a bit, Crow. I'll just stay here and preen myself, thank you very much. What can you tell me about the island, Crow? Only what I've been able to see from above. There's a volcano, dead I think, and lots of jungle, and some nice beaches. I'd like to explore the jungle, but I'm afraid I'm gonna get lost. Any ideas? Well, I could stay airborne and keep track of where you are. That way I could direct you if, sorry, when you get lost. Sounds like a super plan, Crow. Let's go. Volcano. I thought he said it was a dead volcano. It's clearly not dead. The 
The rumbling is much fiercer here, and the ground is... It has got to be emanating from this volcanic mountain. I mean, it looks dead. Great. After surviving a shipwreck, being kidnapped by fishes, and learning to breathe in water, I'm about to die in a volcanic eruption? Isn't that ironic? Where's the irony there? That's one mother of a tree. It's what be at least what made that years ironic? Tall. And what's that in the tree crown? Looks like a man made construction. All right, so there's people living in that tree. That is a face on the mountain. It's a small, eye-sized aperture with a crystal in it, like a lens. Maybe some kind of telescope? I don't see anything interesting. What a strange symbol. I don't see anything interesting. It's a statue standing in the ruins of a city. I can see a statue on a cliff overlooking the sea. I don't see anything interesting. I don't see anything interesting. I don't see anything interesting. It's a statue just below a really tall tree. I don't see anything interesting. Somebody's looking back at me. Oh, wait. That's just my eye. The lens is turned into a mirror. Oh, I gotta keep note. Of these images, don't I? All right, let's uh, bring out Notepad and let's write these down. Uh, uh, what is this arch called? It's a Japanese arch. Japanese arch equals volcano. see anything interesting it's a statue standing in the ruins of a city right arrow equals ruins I can see a statue on a cliff overlooking the sea hot springs equals cliff anything interesting I don't see anything interesting I don't see anything interesting it's a statue just below a really tall tree s slash five equals tall tree I don't see anything interesting okay so I'm gonna assume what I have to do is look at the tall tree and then send a message. It's a triangular hole, like a keyhole. All right, so I need to Send the message, so I need to get the five on top. Does the bottom really matter if I'm just speaking into it? It would just be the solid line, right? That's what I'm looking for. Bottom part of...
bottom part of the statue depicts a creature with large bottom part of this bottom part bottom part of the statue depicts a creature with large ears listening to something. Hmm. No, I think what I need to do is from the ruins and that right arrow is what? Right arrow is next. Okay. Let's take that key. Bottom part of the statue depicts the bottom part of the statue. So I'm gonna send the message from the ruins. It's an old fire it's an old fire. It's an old fireplace. I don't know which one's the root. The ruins are. What's next to ruins? Sorry, the cliff is the hot springs. So I have to send the message to the hot springs. So this one is hot springs. And which one is right arrow? Right arrow is this one. All right, guys. Bottom half of the statue depicts a large eared creature listening intently. Okay, so how? What do I do now? The, bo the bottom half of the statue depicts a. It's 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 the ruined dense dense jungle dense jungle dense jungle dense jungle. It's the ruins of an. There's a large cave down there. This is this is paradise. I look like a real sailor. Hmm. I can see clear to the bottom. I can see. It's an, it's an old. The top half of the statue depicts a bottom part of the stat. Bottom part of the bottom part of the statue depicts a creature with large ears listening to something. Maybe I got them backwards. I have to send the message. I uh, receive a the message. Top half of the statue depicts a creature with a big mouth calling out. No, I'd have to send the message first. That would make more sense logically. I'm a little confused with this puzzle. Oh, I can go right there. Dry twigs and sticks. Dry, dry twigs and sticks. Dry twigs and sticks. Ow! Ow! Shh. Who's there? Da. Shut him. I know there's somebody there. I heard you. Is she gone? Nope. She's shut up. Shut up. If you won't come out, I'll just sit down. Oh my god! Ah! I 
I hate this place. I so hate it, I can't even sit down without crushing the natives. Big person alert! What are you? What does it look like? Um, a talking twig? We're stickmen. And you're an accident waiting to happen with your large, ungainly body and wobbly legs. What's a stick man? An unlucky bugger doomed to a miserable life of stiff backs and monotonous drudgery in the shadow of a mother tree. Happy little fella, ain't ya? You have no idea. So, you guys are stick men. That's right. I'm Wick. This is Willow. And that dumb looking one over there is Woody. And this is our mother tree. What's a mother tree? What do you mean, what's a mother tree? It's a mother tree. How difficult can it be? It's our mother, and it's a tree. It's a mother tree. What do stickmen do? What do we do? What do we do? What do you mean, what do we do? Well, the people in this world always do something. Like the Bonda dug tunnels in the earth. The Marum killed Snapjaw and covered their houses with Tan Yen. You gotta do something. Hey, it ain't easy being a stick, let me tell you. You got your stiff back and limbs. Your fear of fire and water. Your 300 years of miserable boredom. And then you have to get planted and raise a family. It ain't easy. <laughs> so, you're not doing anything worthwhile then. Lady, I'm miserable. I'm grumpy. And I got a headache. What do you want from me? Where do the Alation live? The Alation? The guys with wings? Up in the volcano. There's an old city in there. I think they're squatting. They're squatting. How do I get into the volcano? You don't. The road collapsed a few centuries ago. And when traders come, the Alation fly down to meet them. Nobody goes up there anymore. What's that constant rumbling noise? Lady, you have no idea what we have to endure. All day, all night, that noise is just murder. It all started when Kwaman, the quiet giant, would you believe that's what we used to call him, was banished by the Orowal from his perfect fishing place to some remote place in the forest. Whoa, information overload. Let's step back. Is that him minute. snoring? In the details. Who's Kwaman, the quiet giant? He's the scariest human we've ever seen. All right, so I need to receive the noise. And uses whole trees for toothpicks. From the volcano. But he was a quiet type and reasonably gentle for a human. He'd spend his days out by the Olawal village, catching fish and frying fish and eating fish, and looking out across the ocean, dreaming about loose women or whatnot. What happened to get the quiet giant banished from that place? The Orowal got scared when he accidentally stepped on one of their young ones. He didn't do any real harm, but they banished him from their village nonetheless and told him to go far into the forest. Who are the Orowal? They're the crab-like creatures who live down by the sea. Ah, they're nice people, if a little crabby. And it's hard to understand what they're saying half the time. Where's Kwama now? Somewhere in the forest east of here. We don't know where exactly. He went there to get as far away from the Aura Wall as possible. So what does all this have to do with the rumbling noise? Oh, I was getting to that. If you just let me get a word in edgewise. I just had some questions is all. Anyway. Kwaman is the brooding type, and he takes everything so to heart, he got instantly depressed and went to sleep. And what is he doing now? Still sleeping. That's the problem. But how long ago was it that the Orlawal banished him? The last full moon. Nearly 30 sunsets passed. He's been sleeping for a month? He was depressed. What do you want, lady? 
Once I got so miserable I slept for eight years. And let me tell you, those eight years were the happiest of my life. I am on what, chapter 8? I know there's 13 chapters in total, so I don't think I'm going to beat this today. I still don't understand what this has to do with the rumbling noise. See that statue But the last over there. three chapters have gone by really sure. fast. What's up with that? Back How long have I been playing for? Lived on this island ages ago, Almost four hours. They put these statues up all around the island so that they could speak with each other. You're kidding. So they're, like, telephones? Tell a what? I don't know what that is. The thing is, these statues are all connected through magic. And when you speak into one, your voice flies through the air and comes out of another statue. But I still don't understand... You saw the big head up by the mountain? Yes. That's the one they use to talk to everyone on the island, to warn people of storms or to hold evening prayer. It's connected to the statues as well. And Kwaman is sleeping right next to a statue's ear. I get it. Resonance. He's snoring and the deep bass reverberating through the loudspeaker. The big head causes a resonance that vibrates the entire island. But can't you just wake him up? We don't know where he is. We're not much for exploring this forest. There's water and fire and monkeys. Monkeys like to play with sticks. We don't like monkeys. But can't you just, well, send your voice to his telef... statue to wake him up? There are four problems with that. Number one, all the statues have an assigned symbol, an identifying mark. But we don't know which his is. Second, most of the statues are broken in some way or another. What do you mean? Some statues can only talk to certain other statues. Some oh, if the symbol is broken, to, it doesn't work. Which makes it very difficult to get a connection through to where you want to send your voice. Number three. In order to use the statues, you need a key. We don't have it. We don't know where it is. And number four? We're stick men, lady. What do you think? We don't know much about magic or magical devices. And, and... And what? We're not too smart, okay? There, I said it. We're not too smart. And when you look at Woody over there, who's pretty stupid by Stickman standards, that's a pretty scary thought. Sorry I asked. All right, so... I'm gonna have to use all four of these statues. I'll see you guys... If you don't Hi, I'm Willow. Wicks the oldest. Woody's don't let me keep you. Hello, I'm Woody. They call me the stupid one. I was born with a big brain, so I can't move as fast as my two brothers. I can only do useless stuff like calculations and design, and I play a few instruments, and I'm writing a book on the flora and fauna of Alaeus. I'm the tree. What's up the tree? A wooden it's crossbow. A big wooden crossbow, I guess. I wonder who built it and what it's for. All right, so I got to wake up this guy. Oh, I speak into this one. So this has to be the starting point. Okay, so the listening will be of the self. And the self is this is the tall tree will be the five. It's a triangular hole, like a keyhole. Okay, so if it's broken, you cannot speak into it. All right, so tall tree is five, right? Yes. So I won't be able to go to the volcano because I'll have to go through all four. 
So the volcano will be broken. So ruins or cliff, right arrow or hot spring. Well, there's hot spring. Hot spring is cliff. Okay, so let's head to the cliff. Yeah, these chapters do seem a lot shorter because uh, they're uh, the early chapters in the game were set up, you know, for story. And since the story is set up, now it's just mostly puzzles, and I'm doing pretty well on the puzzles. All right, so I have to receive, which is ear, from the cliffs. Nope, wrong one. And the cliffs was the S. Not cliffs. Received from the trees. This is the cliff. Okay, and I need to send this to the ruins, which will be the right arrow. There we go. And this one will receive from the cliff, which is, the cliff is the hot springs. And then this will send to the volcano, which is the Taisho gate. That's what it is, the Taisho gate. Which is that one. Okay, now they're all functioning. And now I speak into this. Hello? Plus, it definitely helps that I'm remembering these puzzles from 15 years ago. Hello. Hello. All right, I don't think I need this anymore. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Hmm. Why are giants always bored? A uh, bald. Uh, we'll be there. Okay, I guess that's not the place to go. Hmm. He's a stick man. He's a stick man. He's a stick man. Oh, I guess I have to Hello. keep speaking. Kwaman? It's your wake up call, sir. Mm. Hello, Kwaman, do you see? Secret. Quaman wants to be left alone. Could you please stop snoring? Quaman be snoring? No one ever tell Quaman he be snoring. But then Quaman always be sleeping by his lonesome. No woman like Quaman. Say that about yourself, Mom, and I'm sure that, you know, 
It's kind of uncomfortable to be discussing this in a public like this. Yes. Everyone be hearing about Kwama now. Do you want to talk about your problems? Face to face? What be the point? I'm a good listener, and I'd like to be your friend. That'd be the point. Kwama, not sure if he want friend now. Please let me be your friend. Why? Because I'm lonely too. I don't really know anybody on this island, and I need some help. Well, Kwama be wanting to help, but... Okay. Kwama be your friend, and talk to you. My secret place be in the ruins of the old temple, by the wells. Follow the stream up from the rock beach, and go right where it branches. And you just announced your secret place to the entire island. Thanks. It's not a secret anymore. It's another one of those statues come phone booths. They must have been popular in their time. It's a deep well with cold, brackish water and some seriously demented albino fish. It's another one of those statues come phone booths. They must have been popular in their time. Whoa, you are big. You're just about the biggest person I've ever met. Woman be a freak. No one be liking him. I didn't mean it that way. I just meant... Hey, Paul. You know just what to say, don't you? I'm sorry. I like tall guys. Really, I do. You be the only one, then. Because no one else want anything to do with Kwaman. How did you come to be on this island? That be a long story. Do you want Kwaman to be telling you? Sure I have time. Tell me the story. Many long moons ago, Kwaman be happy. He be working at the Circa in Corazon, where he be big attraction. What did you do? Kwaman's putting me to sleep. Kwaman be the world's strongest man. He be popular. People come to see him from all the Northlands. Some even from east of the Bay of Fire. But then there be an accident. And the circuit tell Kwaman to leave. That he be dangerous. And that no one be paying to see him anymore. Of accident. Kwaman's most popular feat be the breaking of large rocks with his fist. Everyone would applaud when the rock be breaking. Then one day, the Kala be at the circa to see the performers. He be saying, Kwaman, I hear of him breaking a large rock with his fist. This I want to see. But my performance be over that day. And there be no rock to break. So the Circa Ringmaster Obron, he be saying, let's get a rock in here, any big rock at all. So they bring in this rock that Kwama never be crushing before. Kwama not be sure if it is a good idea, because rock can be dangerous when it breaks. But Obron be saying, this you must do. The Caliph wants to see. We do not disappoint the Caliph of Khorasan, or we lose our heads. So Kwaman break the rock, and when it breaks... What, what happened? There'll be large pieces of rock flying everywhere, 
and one piece be hitting the caliph and one his son. The caliph be not seriously hurt, but his son be unconscious and bleeding from the head. They say to Quaman, Run, get away from the Circa and Khorasan, or the caliph will have his head. So Quaman run, and he get passage on ship leaving that night. When the ship passed this island, Quaman be jumping into sea and swimming ashore. And now he be here. What happened between you and the Orlawal? Oh, Quaman be so clumsy, so dangerous. He should not be among people. He be only hurting them. Be all the while be kind, letting Quaman live and fish in their village. But then Quaman be stepping over a young all the while, almost breaking his shell. Be all the while tell Quaman to leave village, do not come back because he may kill an all the while. They tell him to go as far away as possible. Quaman be sad because he liked the Olawal and because Quaman be having the best fishing place in all of Alaeus. He loses his friends and his food. What do you eat now? Quaman fish in these wells here, but the fish that live down there be small and not very tasty. Utilities generally are government-mandated monopolies, which, of course, make them fascist, essentially. Would you like to move back to the Orlawal village? Oh, yes. Quaman be wishing that more than anything in the world. I saw an Orlawal down by the beach, just outside the village. It seemed to be in pain, but I didn't know what to do. Perhaps if you come along, you can help him out. And get back in favor with the Orlawal people. Yes, perhaps Quaman can help. Even if the Orlawal do not want him back. But, I mean, when utilities tend to be a bit different Here than normal the, uh, goods and services. Orlawal? Can you help it? Matt Gates is fine. Perhaps Quaman can help. U utility, the problem with utilities be crying is help. because of the uh, uh, uh see what the wrong. public good the problem wall not shed its shell when time come and now it be stuck in the shell why didn't the other Orlawal come to its assistance Their i'm generally against the government uh controlling anything but, but when it comes to public Quamon goods good i hands. can i can understand the reasoning for Quamon government controlling happy. public goods Quaman, accept your graceful thanks, sir. Thank you. You be making Quaman very happy. Quaman, accept your offer and be grateful to the all the wall people. Thank you very much. A public good is anything that is non rivalrous and what non excludable. Did Why did you thank him? All the while be inviting Quaman so to stay a, on the a standard good the village, would be where he can like let's say you him. have your phone. Quaman be very uh, very happy. The, your phone is a good. You understand it's, what but I'm it's not it's rivalrous wall, and it's excludable. Be easy meaning well, only one be uh, company click, does not control clack, your phone. Clock. You can get phones from many so different brands. You, There's competition. Go on, don't so it's rivalrous. Back. And it's non-excludable because you can easily exclude people. So you can say, I don't want to sell my phone to you. So that's, that's excludable. So not rivalrous and excludable. A public good is something that is non-rivalrous and non-excludable. For instance, a road. You cannot have two roads in the same spot. So if you have a road... No one else can build a road on top of your road. That's not possible. And you can't exclude people on the road because it's a public thoroughfare. So public roads are public goods because they are non-rivalrous and non-excludable. And so when it comes to things that are non-rivalrous and non-excludable, it makes sense, well, it can make sense for the government to control it because there's no other options. 
For instance, like cable companies, uh, they are rivalrous, but they are. It, it, cable companies, things like that, is a bit tougher to deal with because you can only have lay down so many lines underground because there is limited space. Of course, government fucks the roads up because government uh, mandates and government funding fuck everything up. Like I said, I can understand the need for it. I'm not saying I agree with it, I, but I can understand the argument for it. Like a private road is always maintained better than a public road. Most roads originally started as private roads. So, for instance, if I open up a, a, uh, a, a supermarket, I want people to be able to get to my supermarket. So I have a financial incentive to build a road so that people can get to my supermarket. But then I have the issue where... Uh, pe another person wants to build a supermarket, my direct competitor, and he wants to do it on my road. I can't exclude him from that. And that becomes a problem, which is why I can understand the argument for government controlling things like public roads. Because if I build a private road and then say nobody else can... Uh, drive on my road unless they're specifically coming to my store, then suddenly we have roads everywhere to nowhere. Hey, Quaman, how's the fish biting? With its teeth? But not today. Why is that? Quaman be not certain. The fish always bite before. But Pete Buttchug is a moron. Lore. He's a now diversity lore, hire. Just bait. I don't even think he's gay. What do you need to make a lure? I think Quaman Chastin is, is a beard. Just anything, as long as it be colorful and not get heavy in water. You're a real DIY guy, don't you know? Always be something wrong with Quaman. That was actually a compliment. Oh. Are you happy now, Quaman? Quaman be happy. He be one. Can I borrow? Quaman must catch fish first. Happy fish. Thank you. All right, he needs something colorful and not heavy. So let's try this candy wrapper. Does this wrapper work as a lure? Yes. Yes, with some work. It'd be perfect for a lure. Now Quaman can make one. And I haven't seen anything fish. wrong with Matt Gates. I I more I don't generally say someone is a is good people. I just say that they haven't proven to me that they're a bad person yet. I haven't seen Matt Gates do anything to tell me he's scum yet. See now that, that that's a tough one, Loudmouth, because there are people who grill Congressional hearings are irrelevant because it's, it's all talk and nothing happens. Like Trey, Gra Trey Gowdy was famous for having really awesome congressional hearings, but then Hello, he didn't Quaman. do anything with them. Hello, April. Airing of grievances isn't Thank enough. You. Airing of grievances just makes the public happy. I don't want to see airing of grievances. I want to see people prosecuted. Hello, Happy Thank you. Quaman is fishing. See, when I talk to you, I stop paying attention to the game. And so, it's, it's, it's the ruins I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Crossbow in the tree. I did. Well, I thought of it. 
And these two nincompoops gave a helping twig on the, uh, manual side. So they built it, and you supervised? Yep. But Remember, a lot of times, still these hearings and even these DOJ uh, investigations are cover-ups. Did you say blast off for Luna? That's what I said, Luna. As in the moon? So, for instance, it's just Let's been say, announced that uh, the DOJ to to is the going to charge, fi then? formally file charges against Luna Ray Epps. And yes, that's the plan. You, th that sounds you like a good thing, loonies. right? No, I think it's it's. If I think loonies, that's the cover up, because now, yes. Yes, whenever anyone are. asks about Ray Epps, everyone will just be able to respond. Oh, we can't talk about that. It's an ongoing investigation. And that's the cover-up. You keep things under investigation until the end of time, and then they can never talk about it. They have an excuse not to talk about it. Or they slap them with some stupid, useless charge. How come you're not working on your lunar cannon now? Because of that infernal noise is why. But Kwaman has moved back to the Orlowal village. He's not going to disturb you again, trust me. Really? How the heck did that happen? Nah. These guys walk slow. Walk faster. How's it going? Almost there. Oh, uh, one tiny little problem, though. And that is? We don't have a bowstring for our, uh, uh... Propulsion drive mechanism, Wick. Uh, what he said, uh, yeah. We... Like what? I like a rope. Know, lady, I'm string made from animal guts. Yeah, but look at us. We look like the kind of stick men who'd make good hunters. Now, this is not made from animal guts. So I guess it doesn't cut it. How's it going? Nah, we're missing string made from animal. All right, I need string made from animal guts. For the non-hunters. We we all we all know whose coke it was. This is paradise. It's the or it's the Orlowal village. Did my Laura work okay? It'd be working very good. Quaman catch. Uh, no. This not be seafood. It be human food. What's Kwaman gonna be? Kwaman be sitting here until the sun sets. Then he be go. And tomorrow. Kwaman be deciding that when he wakes up. The most up in important the thing to note about the yeah, whole crack in the White House thing art. is the fact that they say Kwaman they can't uh, determine who it belonged to. He be so a Philistine. When they I'll found the, the, the crack, so they I. originally feared Goodbye. it could be anthrax. So they, in, they evacuated the White House. And now they're saying that they can't tell who brought it into the White House. So what they are admitting is that someone could have brought a bag of anthrax enough to kill every single man, woman, and child in the White House. And they would have been, had no way to track who just killed the President of the United States. And 
the entire executive cabinet. That's what they're saying. That's absolutely ridiculous, and that is a lie, and we all know it. I don't figure I'll be needing the rod anytime soon, but... It's a long, strong, and flexible fishing line. I borrowed it from Kwaman's fishing rod. Looks like Kwaman just had himself a solid lunch. It's, it's Kwaman's fishing rod. It's Kwaman. He looks happy now that the Orlowal let him have... It's, it's the Orlowal villain. Can you use this as bowstring for your, uh, lunar cannon? Let me see that. Oh, yeah, that gonna work good. All right, listen up. I got us what we need. And now we... I got us what cannon. we need. Go to work, people. Wick always Give taking credit. Minutes, lady, and we'll be all done. It worked, you wood brain fool. I built it. Are you done? Yes, ma'am. The lunar cannon is now ready to be tested. Well? Well, what? Test it. Are you going to do it? Do what? Test the cannon. Me? And get myself killed? I think not. But go ahead, be my guest. I don't think I'll fit in there. That ain't my problem. Let's launch the fishbone. Yup, the cannon is done. I feel like sleeping for a year or two. Hey, all done. According to Wick, it's a lunar cannon. Nothing. Apparently, As it's powerful know, enough to send a stick man to the moon. Oh, drive. sure, in a Jules Verne novel, perhaps. Hmm. I'll save it for when I really need it. Hmm. Without a hook, there's not much point in shooting the rope across. It's not going to tie itself to the tree. Ah. I'll just place the hook along the bowstring, like so, and let the rope trail behind it. Okay, we're ready to fire. Can I test the cannon? Be my, my guest. guest. Ashton Kutcher has been publicly fighting against child trafficking for a decade now. So if he wants to name names, good for him. But he needs to reiterate that he's not he has no interest in killing himself. There's a slight updraft here. The wind is channeled through that chasm down there and blown out and up here. Can you help me across? You are human, and we don't allow human strangers into our village. If you wish to trade, let us know where your ship is anchored and we will send traders to you with our merchandise. I don't have a ship, and I didn't come here to trade. I came to talk to your leaders. I'm sorry. But, but then again, I always have my doubts about the TikToks. Don't announce that you're going to name names. Name the names. If you announce you're going to name names, that you're giving them time to set up your assassination. Actually, I am a traitor. Where is your ship anchored? In, um, Coconut Grove? 
There is no coconut grove on Elias. So, I'm not a traitor, but I am a friend of the Elation people. We don't know you. There is no friendship between strangers. And generally, when anyone ever sets up these uh, TikTok, uh, these TikToks, and when I mean TikToks, I don't mean the platform TikTok. I mean TikToks as in TikTok goes the clock. I'm going to do it soon. TikTok, it's coming. They never end up revealing anything. Ha Sean Hannity was famous for his TikToks that went nowhere. And the last time someone uh, made a was saying that TikTok he was going to name names. That was Corey. Uh, Corey, what's his name? And he never named any names. Don't your people have a prophecy about a stranger who comes without a ship, or something like that? I don't know of any prophecies, human. One of the two Corys, not Corey Haim, the other one. What kind of prophecies do you know about? We don't tell our stories to strangers. The cool one. What's up this road? The Alation village of Tamar. Where's the Alation village of Tamar? Up this road and into the volcano. Isn't it dangerous to live inside a volcano? This volcano has not erupted for thousands of years, and the gods protect us. We are safe here. Is there another way to get into the volcano? No. This pass is the only way. I'm sure there's a secret cave somewhere that leads into the volcano. No, there isn't. There's all not here. Are you a human? You Thank you. Yes. Oh, God, I think I'm going to throw up. That was so not appetizing. Weirdest thing, though. I do feel lighter. Like I lost 90 pounds. I can't even imagine what people would pay for this stuff back home. Whoa, I'm flying! Not. I guess I still weigh too much to be carried on that slight updraft. So let's make it a bigger updraft. That's the last of it, unfortunately. Ah! That seemed very risky. Uh. Human. You flew across the chasm. You don't have wings, but still, you fly like the elation. Believe me, I'm as shocked as you are. Are you the Windbringer? The Windbringer. Yes, I am. This is an exciting day. Uh, remind me again who the Windbringer is. It's said that someone not of the elation shall come among us to float on the wind like an elation, to learn our stories. To bring the wind back to us, and to bring us into a new and happier age. Is that all? You know, I'm starting to forget how simple my life used to be. Family, friends, grades, boys, no prophecies, nobody looking to me for salvation. I don't understand, Windbringer. You should speak with our teller up in the city. She'll be wanting to see you, I'm sure. We've waited for the Windbringer for a very long time. The teller? Thanks. No, Windbringer. Thank you. Thanks for your help. You should... Hello. Hello. Good day, stranger. Hello there. What would you hear among the elation? I need to speak with the teller. The teller? Uh, go down into the city, and you will see the castle. The teller, she keeps to the tower. She's old, and her eyes don't take well to the sun. Hello? Did you... Uh... Then you should. When the city was inhabited by its original population, that tower was probably in a... Nature's reclaiming lost ground. The contrast between wilderness and civilization is such a...
the ziggurat. Hi there. What you doing? Playing. I'm gonna call it a night when yeah, I finish this playing? chapter. Nothing. My daddy's in the castle watch. He's allowed to sharpen his claws. Really? My daddy owns a farm. Yeah? Do you have animals there? Sure. He has some cows and some horses and... What? What's cows and horses? Well, cows are big, brown, fat animals with four legs and white spots. And they go moo a lot. <laughs> and horses? Horses are fun to be around. They run really fast, and they can jump over tall fences, and they look beautiful and graceful. But the best thing about horses is that you can ride them. I can run fast, too. But I can't fly yet. My wings aren't fully formed. But when I grow up, I'll fly far away and see everything. I'll go see our horses. That would be nice. My name's April. What's yours? Saina. Will you be my friend, April? Of course, Saina, as long as you promise to be my friend. I promise. Do you know where the teller lives? Over there, in the castle tower. My daddy's watching the entrance so that only nice people can get in. Do you think he'll let me in? I don't know, if you're nice. But you have to ask my daddy. Where are the other children in your village? Oh, they're in school now. Then why aren't you in school? Because I'm ahead of everyone else. I'm really smart, you know. I'm the only youngling to have learned the first tale this soon. So some days, I get to do what I want. It's a little boring, though. I wish I was in school. At least there I could sing and play and jump around with all the other children. Why don't you go to school anyway? Because they say I would just distract the other children who are still learning their first tales. It's not fair. I mean, I get to play by myself and everything. But that's not fun all day. And my mommy's working on her pottery at home. And she doesn't want me disturbing her because she might make a mistake. But the day after tomorrow, I get to go back to school. Because then we're going to learn some more flying lessons. They're always a lot of fun. And I'm getting pretty good at that, too. I bet. I wish I had wings like you do. Yes, they're very good to have when you fly. Have fun, sir. Are you leaving? Yes, I'm sorry. Grown-ups are always too busy. Grown-ups are always too busy. Be careful, don't come too close. I'm almost done with this pot. Sorry. Are you here to buy pottery? No, I came to speak with your t Really? I didn't know the teller spoke with anyone. Supposedly. Nima is my name. Nima of Taama. The only Alation village on a lace. I like your pot. It's our craft. That and storytelling. But I know a lot of people who live by telling stories. Oh. They are lucky then. Not that I don't enjoy making pottery. It's good to feel. It's almost like creating a new life. I think. I don't have a... Neither, thank God. I don't think I'm ready. I was 18 turnings this spring. I'm ready for a husband. But I've yet to court anyone who could make me soar on the winds. I think the men of town... What about the guard on the road below the village? He's our age, isn't he? Isam? He's quite pretty. And his wings are big. But I don't think he likes me. He... That doesn't mean anything. Maybe you could talk to him. Find out... Sure. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm playing matchmaker. So, Isam, that's your name, isn't it? Yes, Isam of Tamar. Good-looking guy like you must get a lot of attention. Are you asking me for court? Me? No. Wings don't do anything for... I'm without a mate. The women of Tama are cold and unfriendly. Huh. Nima? No, she's too pretty for me. 
She won't appreciate my... This is like high school. Trust me, Isam. You go talk to her one of these... You think so? Perhaps you are... Thanks for your help. You should go see the teller. Halt! Who would visit... My name's April. And what would you with the teller, human? I'm not sure, but I need to... The teller is our teacher and our mother. But she will not speak with foreigners who walk into our city. And how, pray tell, did you get here? The road is closed and guarded. It's got to be my female charm. It will not work on me, human. Please, leave our village and return to your ship. Halt. I'm the Windbringer. The Windbringer? You are not the Windbringer. O are you? How else would I have been able to get up here? I am the Windbringer. If so, you must prove that you are of the elation. There are four tales from the four corners of the world, but you must know they are the tale of winds, the tale of stars. I will ask you one question from each tale, and you must... Hmm. No, get then return when you are ready. Save. All right, let's try. Are you ready? Yes. In the Tale of Winds, which mountain did Iwana fall from in her vain attempt to fly higher and further than anyone else? Uh... I have no idea. I have. Then you should pay more attention to the tale. Now, she said she knew the first tale, so. Hi, Sai. Hi, April. Do you know one of the four tales of. Yes, my mommy taught me the tale of the stars. Please, Sai, and I will. Okay, this is my tale, the tale of stars, and I tell it to you in my own words. As it was told to me by my teacher, in her words. In the small village of Jinjay near the rumbling hills of Onion, there lived a girl called Mona. She was a curious girl, and she would always get in the way of grown elation. Go play somewhere else, they would say to Mona. But she didn't want to play with the other children. She wanted to be where the grown-ups were, see what they were doing, and learn from them. But one day, after getting many complaints from the pottery makers and guardsmen and traders and soldiers in the village, Mona's mother told her that she wasn't to interfere with the grown-ups anymore. And that instead, she could go play with the other children, or sit still and draw, or work with clay. But Mona was always curious, and now, since she wasn't to be among the grown elation anymore... She decided to go exploring the forest that lay just outside of the village of Jinjay. She had many times been forbidden to enter the forest because it could be a dangerous place, but Mona was very curious. Of course she wasn't planning on going far into the forest, but then her eye caught sight of a white fluff tail hopping through the tall grass, and Mona, curious as ever, gave chase. The fluff tail ran away into the forest, and Mona followed, flying to where she was going, and interested only in catching the white fluff tail so that she could keep it as a pet. But then, after a good while, the fluff tail disappeared into a hole in the ground, leaving Mona alone in a small clearing, somewhere deep inside the forest. She was exhausted after running after the fluff tail for so long. And as she looked around at the clearing at the unfamiliar trees and flowers, she realized that she hadn't been paying attention to where she was going. Not for the first time, her curiosity had gotten the better of her, but this time it was serious. Mona was too young to fly, and she had very little sense of direction. And chasing the white fluff tail had made her dizzy and tired. It was getting darker, and Mona was all alone in the deep, dangerous forest, too sleepy and too scared to be able to go anywhere. Mona curled up with her wings wrapped around her under the leaves of a tree and began crying. Soon it got really dark, and somewhere, not far away, wolves started howling at the moon, 
Luna was so scared, she was petrified. But after a while, her exhaustion got the better of her, and she fell asleep. She woke up when she heard a voice calling her from somewhere far above. Looking up at the starry sky, Mona saw a vision of the spirits, the five tellers, gazing down at her. You have let your curiosity leave you astray, said one. You are lost, and you deserve to be lost, said another. Poor little girl, said a third. We will help you home, said a fourth. But remember this, said the fifth spirit. We will lead you back to your village and to your mother only if you promise us one thing. I promise, said Mona. Whatever it is, I promise I will do it. Very well, said the first spirit. We'll make the story of this night into your own tale, and you will call it the Tale of Stars. It will be a tale to warn the curious to be careful, continued the third spirit, and to not let their curiosity get the better of them. And, said the second spirit, to remind the elation that the spirits of their tellers watch out for them when they most need it. And so the spirits of the five tellers guided Mona through the forest, and by dawn she was home. And Mona did tell her tale, the tale of stars, to everyone in the village, so that everyone would remember that the curious must be cautious, and that the spirits of the tellers are always watching. This was my tale, the tale of stars, and I told it in my own words as my teacher did to me. That was a beautiful tale, Saina. Thank you. Goodbye, Saina. You're leaving again? Me too, Saina. Hi, Mima. Hi, Ip. Do you know I had to learn the tale of homecoming? It took a long time, but I think I got it now. I'm better with pottery than I am with the tales, unfortunately. Please. Very well. This is the tale of homecoming, my tale, and I shall tell it in my own words, as told to me by my teacher, in her words, and by her teacher in turn. Moran was a handsome young Alation man with strong wings and a hearty beak. He lived below the white cliffs, where the water was salty and the fish plentiful. Moran was betrothed to Anara, the loveliest girl there ever was. She was fair and slender and tall, and her eyes were the clearest shade of blue. But Moran was hesitant to enter into union with Anara, to become her husband and to give her children. He would always come up with a new excuse for why they had to wait a little while longer. Now, Anara was skilled at pottery, but even more so with stories and the teller of the village had many times asked Anara to be her apprentice, to learn all the tales, so that someday she could take over as the teller. But Anara refused, knowing that if she did accept the teller's offer, she would never be able to marry Moran, because a teller cannot have a husband nor children of her own. Her refusal to become the teller's apprentice was unheard of, because who could refuse such an honor? But to Anara, love was more important, her love for Moran was beyond honor, beyond reason. But despite Anara's love, Moran was still hesitant. And then one day he told Anara, I am traveling on a pilgrimage to the far shores. I will be gone for some time. And while I am traveling, and in accordance with our traditions, I will be freed from our betrothal. Not until I come back will the bond between us be renewed. It was not unusual for a young Alation man at that time to go on a pilgrimage, and the bond between the betrothed would often be cut while he was away, to be formed again upon his return. But Anara was heartbroken, because she had thought that Moran would soon want to marry her. When Moran saw her tears, he said to her, Do not weep. When I come back, I promise I will marry you. Just wait for me, and stay with your pots, to make the time pass quickly. And then Moran left on his pilgrimage to the far shores. Many years went by, and Moran had exciting adventures on the far shores. But by and by, he began to long for home, and for Anara. And now he had finally realized that he loved her, and that he wanted to marry her. But when he returned, he could not find Anara amongst the pot makers. He went to visit her family, and they told him that, after waiting for many years, Anara accepted the teller's offer of apprenticeship. 
and that when the teller left on the last wind during the previous winter, Anara herself became the new teller. Angry, Moran made his way to the teller's nest, and when he saw Anara, he said to her, You promised me you would wait! But Anara did not say a single word in answer. She just turned around and lifted something wrapped in leaves from the cot behind her and gave it to Moran. Moran unwrapped the package, and inside he found an old pot, cracked and broken in two. What is this pot? he asked. And why did you not wait for me like I asked you to? And finally, Anara spoke, and she said to Moran, I made this pot for you, my dear Moran, when you left, because I wanted it to be my marriage gift to you. But when many, many years passed, I finally realized that you did not love me the way I love you, and to live hoping otherwise would be death. But I want to marry you, cried Moran. I came back. But Anara just nodded at the broken pot in Moran's hands and said, like an old pot that is left without care, a heart may break in two, and a broken heart can never be mended. And so Anara turned away, never to speak with Moran again. And Moran's heart, like the pot that was left untended, broke in two, because absence makes a heart brittle. This was the tale of homecoming, my tale. That's actually a and really good it story. In my own words, as told to me by my teacher, and as I will tell it to my student when the time comes. Bye, Ma. The writing in this game really is fantastic. Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? Mine is the tale of sea, human. Would you mind telling it to me? I would be happy to do so. This is the tale of sea, told in my own words, as it was told to me by my teacher in his words, and to him by his teacher in his words. This was a very, very long time ago, when the Alation were a strong people, and we could spend days riding the hot winds above the seas. We hunted fish then, and we were at war with the Merum, the Wet Tails. Akalis was one of the strongest warriors there was. His claws were sharp and long, his beak pointy, and his teeth strong. Akaris was admired by everyone in his clan, and because of this, he was cocky and arrogant. So one day, the teller of Akaris city asked him to perform a very important and very special duty, to bring a sacred jewel to the teller of an elation town across the sea. This particular jewel was very important because it signified a union between the two towns, and it would benefit the people of both that it was delivered safely and promptly. Akalis grinned and told the teller that he would deliver the jewel both quickly and safely, and that she was not to worry. But the teller did worry because Akalis was young, and too sure of himself. But she wanted to test him and to teach him that sharp claws, a pointy beak, and strong teeth are not all a warrior needs, that a warrior must also be wise and careful. So Akalis set out across the sea on his flight. It was on the fourth day that he spotted something in the water that caught his attention. And forgetting his duty and following his curiosity, Akalis dived towards the water to investigate. When he came closer, he saw that there were Merum in the water, foolishly hunting close to the surface, and Akalis saw an opportunity to again prove his might. As a great warrior to his people, and to capture the fins of a few wet tails. But this time... Akalis' arrogance got the better of him because the Merum had set a trap. 
As he dived towards the mirror with his claws, a spear shot up from the water to hit him. Acarus struck the water and dropped the jewel he was carrying, and it was all he could do not to drown. Acarus was bleeding, and the mirror was grabbing onto his wings and his legs, but he fought bravely, and finally he managed to escape. But even though he now lived, he was dead inside. Because the shame of losing the sacred jewel would always be with him. Acarus could not return to his village because he had neglected his duty to his teller and to his people. And so he went away to a small island where he could be alone. To himself and his people, Acarus now became the lost one. He who had been on a sacred mission but had failed in his arrogance. A year passed, and one day Acarus met with human traders from a ship that came close to his island. From the traders, Acarus heard speak of a hideous creature that lived in the sea, the Octowo. The Octowo was said to have a third eye, like a jewel, and that this eye pulled hapless sailors into its deadly eight-armed grasp. Acarus knew immediately that the Octowo's third eye had to be the jewel that he lost in the sea a year ago, and he now saw the opportunity to redeem himself. But the Latian were not used to water, and the thought of submerging himself in the cold, harsh ocean chilled Acarus to his heart. But he was the lost one, and if in his death he could at the very least redeem himself. To his own heart, then, it would be worth it. So Acarus fashioned himself a spear, because in the water his claws and his beak would be too slow, and he flew out to where the Octowo was last seen. And then Acarus dived into the sea. The dark water closed in on him, and his wings and legs went numb. But still, Acarus kept pushing down until he saw the lair of the Octowo. Sparking Acarus, the Octowo attacked, and Acarus saw the monster's third eye, his sacred jewel, shining bright in the darkness. And his heart was filled with a sense of duty and courage that he had never felt before. But as he began fighting the eight-armed monster, Acarus realized that if he were to fight like he usually did, he would not stand a chance. He would have to think differently. And so Acarus tricked the Octowo into following him through a tight chasm where the monster got stuck. And then he swam above it and, using his spear, tipped a rock on top of the Octowo. Swimming back down again, the Octowo was flailing helplessly. Now, Almost out of air, Acarus took the sacred jewel from the Octuo's head and swam back up. Finally, Acarus could deliver the sacred jewel to the town across the sea. And upon returning to his village, he went to the teller, bowed his head, and said, Forgive me, teller, for in my arrogance I thought I could do everything, but I could not and I became the lost one because of it. You were lost, said the teller, but you are no more, because now you see the limits of your own strength, and you will know that a warrior must be careful and wise in addition to being strong and fierce. This was the tale of C, and I told it in Do you know one of the... Mine is the tale of winds when... Very much. Then I shall tell it. This is in the village of Karan, in the mountains of tall winds. There lived a young Alatian woman named Iwana. Iwana had one desire above all others, to soar higher and farther than anyone else. And even though her wings were no broader, nor her body sleeker than anyone else's, she pursued this foolish desire without rest. And as time passed, 
She did soar higher, and she did fly farther than the other young Alation in her village. And her name became known far and wide amongst the tribes of the mountains of tall winds. But still, Iwana was not happy. She was not happy because, in her vanity, even though she was a better flyer than almost everyone else, and to her eyes, she was still not good enough. She wanted to be so much better than anyone else that she would be remembered for all time as the best flyer amongst all the elation. And so one day, Iwana decided to climb to the top of Mount Bakta'ana, the Tower of Light, and to soar from those giddy heights to the ends of the world. Her friends and her family pleaded with her not to, because every elation knew that to soar from such heights was dangerous, that at such heights the air was thin and the winds treacherous. But Iwana would not listen, and on a cold and clear morning she climbed up the Tower of Light to the rock and the ice at the very top. From there she could see to the ends of the world. And it brought tears to her eyes to know that now, finally, she would be greater and better than any elation before her. And so Iwana spread her wings and leaped off the mountain. Those who watched her from far below said that for a split moment, Iwana soared, and she soared higher and farther than any elation before or since. But then the treacherous winds caught a hold of her, and the thin air made her plummet towards the ground and to fall to her death amongst the rocks at the base of the mountain. In her vanity, Iwana could not see beyond her desire to be the very best. And vanity always stands to fall. That was the tale of winds, my tale, and I told it in my own words, as told to me in turn by my teacher. Are you ready for the questions now? Yes, ask me the questions. In the Tale of Winds... What's up, Merv? Which mountain did Iwana fall from? In her vein? Mount Bakta'ana, the Tower of Light. That is correct. In the Tale of Stars, what did Mona... The Spirits of Five Tellers. That is correct. In the Tale of Sea, what creature did the Lost One battle in his quest to recover the Sacred Jewel? The Octawa? That is correct. My final question to you is this. In the tale of Homecoming, a pot. what was given to Moran by his teller when he returned from his pilgrimage? A broken pot. A broken pot to teach him that absence may break a heart in two. You have correctly answered all my questions and so have proven your knowledge of the four tales. You are the Windbringer. It was... Uh, the will see you presently. Uh, Emujs.jaxel.discstation.me Come closer, human. Closer. I cannot see your face. Closer still, come sit here by me. Sure. There you are. <laughs> you see, my eyes are not what they used to be. Ages ago, I could spot a ladybug crawling up a straw of grass from 15 tree lengths up. Now, I have a hard time seeing my supper. But my ears. Balance be praised, my ears, they are as good as ever. I could hear you outside, learning the tales my children tell. You are a good listener, and a fast learner. They were interesting stories, and your people told them well. That is what we do. 
The Elation are the keepers of the tales, and I am their teller, the one who must know all the tales told since the day we came to this world. How can you do that? How can you remember every story ever told? The secret is to tell them often and to tell them in your own words, not the words of your ancestors. Doesn't that mean that the stories change with every generation? Yes, as all tales must. Change is important. Otherwise, the tales will have no meaning to us. They will just be words. And we do not care about the words. We care about what the words tell us. Which is why all the tales have lessons. Since the beginning, human. Since we came to this world a long, long time ago. You're not from Earth? From Arcadia? Not according to our tales. We came on a great wind before the divide, when the Earth was one and humans had yet to learn of magic and science. That is a, we were a different people winged then, and the tales reptile we from scaly bird thing. A pterodactyl. Like myths and legends. The younger relation pay little attention to these tales. Or if you've seen um, the original Beastmaster be movie from the tales, from the eighties. And I am getting old. Very old. The guys that would hug you and uh uh, I, I guess he, they would digest you in their arms. <laughs> I came to you to find answers to some important questions. Ask, and I will try my Beastmaster was answer. a great movie. Only the first one. Have you heard of an ancient god or dragon that lives beneath the sea? Once, long ago, when my people lived in harmony with the Merim, there were stories of an old god worshipped by the Merim who resided... Beastmaster 2 was ridiculous. According to Lancet, For some reason, the there's a portal through time, the into their realm, and Beastmaster into the ocean, comes and to and now 90s L.A. <laughs> Back where? To a Think, great um, amongst the, stars. the mannequin. When the time came, he would gather the Merim and bring them home with him, back to their world, to their ocean. Strangely enough, we have a similar tale. Or the mannequin, the too. The wind that brought us here will someday return to bring us back to a place where we can soar forever on warm winds. Like heaven. In a way, perhaps, but without the need for any of us to die. The great wind will just sweep us up and carry us away. Every evening before I go to sleep. Yeah, Beastmaster 2 is basically Mannequin 2. It's ridiculous. It is a comforting one. What do you know about the dry kin? The kin are numbered four. Or so our tales tell. Two in this world, two in the other. The mirror world. The white and the blue. The red and the green. Do you know where they are? No, the tales never say. The kin are elusive. They keep to themselves. I have well, I find myself, um, I Beastmaster 2 has. more watchable than Beastmaster 1. But Beastmaster 1 is the better movie. The are tied to the fate of the kin. But how, I would not pretend to know. It's just Beastmaster this 2 is just ridiculous fun. Do you know anything about the Guardian's realm? This is human business. Would you not know more than I? Your people are the keepers of the tales. You remember more than humankind has forgotten. Please, I need to hear what you know. That is very little. The Guardian's realm is home to the Guardian in his tower. No one is permitted within except the Guardian who was, the Guardian who is, and the Guardian who will be. And, of course, the Dryak kin, who were instrumental in its making. Have you ever heard of the existence of a hidden entrance to his realm? Oh, yes. Yes, I have heard tell of such a thing, though I would not know where it is. I gather that one of the kin may be able to tell you. Thank you. I don't have any more questions. I am glad Cortez. I could Cortez. Was Cortez the red or the green? I don't I'm remember. I know you are. <laughs> it's strange to me to hear those words spoken. I did not think they would be in my lifetime. But here you are, 
standing in front of me as real as the sky is blue. I'm sorry I have to ask, but what is it that the Windbringer is supposed to do for you? I did not expect you to walk in here and have all the answers, child. The balance has both blessed you and... Oh, yeah, Sega Saturn. Best it version. sent you here to do what it wills. The Windbringer is said to be the first sign of the great wind that will take us away from here. For a long time, the Elation have lost the strength they used to have. Best graphics. And I also believe it has cutscenes. fragile. You know, real cutscenes. We cut used scenes. to be able to soar for days on strong winds. We are now using our legs to walk rather than fly. Like the, the uh, Why this is Mortal Kombat 3 cutscenes. You know of are, are known to have different cutscenes depending on which console you're on. Go on. The tales also say that the Windbringer will unite us with our past and end the age-old strife. Or was that four? I can't I remember. You must make peace and be reunited with the Marum. You share a common ancestry. I have always thought we did. The tales were too similar. The signs clear. But my people, they... They will have a difficult time understanding why and how this can be. If you don't, both the Elation and the Marum will die out. When war broke out between your people and you were forced to move up into the mountains, it compromised a precarious symbiosis. A substance called Tanyan was abundant where the Marum and the Elation lived in close proximity. It brought fish and heat and light to both your people. But now, living up in the mountains, your way of life, your diet, your customs and habits, they've all changed. And that's probably the cause of your brittle bones and fragile wings. Then we must make peace with the Marum and restore the balance between us so as to strengthen us both and prepare us for the journey. When our sitting is over, I will speak to my people and I will elect one representative from the Elation to... I guess it's time for you to talk to your people and for me to... Where do you wish for our meeting to... You want me to decide? Um, inside, there are remnants of an old Elation settlement and a Marum city. It's a good place for your two people to meet. Yes. And could you ask if they would bring their half of the stone? The stone? We have held on to it for centuries, knowing that someday it would be of use. It will. Then we must make haste and arrangements. It is an important day, so... Castlevania Symphony of the Night isn't on the Saturn. It's PS1. It's amazing. This place is so beautiful. Symphony of the Night's a PS1 the game. Scent of sea and rock and nest. This scent is of home. This was home a long, long time ago, according to the tales. We lived in peace with the wet tail, uh, with the marrow back then. Oh, I did not know that. To live in peace again. And with the Tanyan bringing fish to your doorstep, you'll be able to eat well and restore strength to your bones. Soon you might even be able to soar on the winds for days like you used to do. I hope you are right, Windbringer. And I hope that the wet, the Mirum, will see the sense in it too. They are coming, are they not? They said they would. Hush, I hear something. Yeah. Uh, it we are here, Water Stiller, as was promised. Good. Now, as representatives of your respective peoples, you, the Queen of Amiram City, and you, Guard to the Elation Teller, must fulfill the prophecy and join the two parts of the One Stone. We hope that our peoples may be joined again, Elation, and that we may live in peace and prosper. As do we, Marum. And we pledge to do all we can for this uh, to happen. You don't, but then it'll, you'll use a public save. So make an, if you make an account, you'll have your own private save. The stone is now whole, Windbringer. And the elation and the Mirum will once again be as one. You may take it with you. Thank you. The both of you. Come now, April, and we will take you to our sleeping god. May his wisdom guide you and lead you down the right path. 
All right, so I got the two stones from here. Now I need the two earth stones. Or the, the two uh, other stones. I forgot what the science world is called. Stark. Two Stark stones. An eyeball? Is that a butthole? Looks like a butthole. It's some kind of organic sensor. Hello? Is anybody in there? Spooky. Well, I guess it's an invitation of sorts. Don't swim into the butthole. It's soft and spongy. Swimming into the butthole. There's air in here. And it's dry. I swear I'm never taking a bath again. That is clearly an eye. That doesn't look like a natural protrusion. It's too big and I know round. you. Do not be afraid. I know what you are. Uh, you... you do? Yes. Yes. What would you hear? I do not like to be disturbed. I wish to be left alone. of the sea and I'm breathing. So just cut the Buddhist bullshit about a journey of self-discovery. Your question has already been answered. That's so not helpful. I'm looking for a jewel called the Dragon's Eye. You're looking at the Dragon's yes. Eye. Take it. 
Are you sure? Take it. It is yours now. It is power. Okay. Guy talks too slow. What is the day of ascension? The day when the kin return home. When my siblings come. So you're going back. We will. When what's right? I will not. I need to know where I can find the gateway to the... So you come. They told me. Well, they as in the few people... I know. When the earth was divided, there was... But it's moved, hasn't it? That spot. When Stark and Arcadia were created... Into the sky. But where? I knew you were coming. I speak with the dark the dark people they are my messengers you knew i was coming and why then okay i know this is probably a futile question but why you are afraid of time and hard work no but no it is not you had prophecy now you said something about the dark people have it what Yes. Here come the dark people. taking me on board who are you uh well i thought you i mean didn't the old dragon well i'm april ryan from stark and i guess you're a dark person but who are you i i'm just a student not anybody special you are special who are you? I'm not. I'm just... <sighs> I'm the Windbringer. I'm the Water Stiller. I'm April Bondu Mbata of the Banda and the Venar Kangang La. I'm a shifter. I will someday become the 13th Guardian, the protector of the balance. And I'm April Ryan. This is who I am. Yes. That is who you are. And you are a wave. Why am I uh, a wave? Random guy you just walks across the screen. You play an important part in the cosmos. A wave is someone who propels people and events toward change, towards the future. And that's what I do? You are a wave. There are ripples from your passing, and they spread wide and far. Those ripples will never die down. The worlds will be changed by your journey. You're telling me that everything I do affects the universe? You cannot escape it. You are a wave. The ancient dragon... The blue of the dry kin told me you had a map for me. A map of stars, yes. It was made for you in our library and given to me to hold. It is yours now. Keep it well. It is the only one. I'm looking for an ancient stone given to you by the Sentinel, the Fathers. You came for the stone. Of course we have it with us. Our ship would not have been chosen to meet you were it not for the stone we carry with us. Everybody's just waiting around for me to show up so that they can give me stuff. Who knew adventuring was going to be this Yeah, easy? Saturn is tough, Herf, it will not because it's all running in JavaScript. Of that, I can assure you. So if something but doesn't work, it doesn't work on your end. To you. 
because it's JavaScript. We're instructed to do when the fathers first entrusted it to us. JavaScript is local, not remote. Can this ship take me back to Mercuria? I mean, would you mind? We will bring you to Mercuria henceforth. It will take the night, but we will be there at first light. That's fine. Thanks a lot. You are free to rest here, to sleep, while we travel. The flames will keep you warm, but do not move too far away. My brothers are not friendly with outsiders. They do not take kindly to intrusion. I'll keep that in mind. I'm staying right here. Good. Sleep. All right, well, that's the end of the chapter, so I am going to call it a night. I am tired, and I've been playing for five hours. And we just met the dark people. I'll be back tomorrow, probably around the same time, 2 p.m. This is chapter 9, so 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Five more chapters. Did you sleep? Very comfortably, thanks. Where are we? In the Mercuria Harbor. But there are barely any ships here. I do not know why. We must leave you here. We have other business. Carry your wave into the future, April. Whatever that means, I'll try. Where did all the ships go? They're gone. This can't be a good sign. I mean, duh. The city looks strangely quiet and deserted. And the sky, those are not ordinary clouds. They look more like, like smoke. What's going on here? All right. Well, that is it for tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Irv, you have a good night. Peace out.